October is here and the leaves are turning orange and as the big orange made its traditional fall walk into Neyland Stadium many are wondering what kind of future they are marching into. Coach Jeremy Pruitt is elected to go with a freshman starting quarterback Brian Maurer. Three years ago George's Kirby Smart rolled those same dice. Jake Fromm has become one of the great signal callers in Bulldog history. Tonight, two SEC rivals meet, one trying to turn their program around, the other hoping to take another step toward a college football playoff appearance. Smokey and Ugga right now. You're watching College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. And welcome everyone to Knoxville, Tennessee, a very pleasant early October evening. The temperature in the mid 80s as we approach kickoff for number three Georgia with a record of 4-0 off a victory against Notre Dame two weeks ago. And the Tennessee Vols a very disappointing 1-3 but an opportunity perhaps for a program changing win tonight. Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge joined in just a moment by Holly Rowe. Delighted to have you with us Tennessee won the opening uh, won the coin toss and elected to receive the opening kickoff. So Ty Chandler is back deep for the kick from Rodrigo Blankenship and an interesting decision off the coin toss by Jeremy Pruitt. He's going to put his first time starter the true freshman Brian Maurer on the field immediately. Well, let's see what we got. Blankenship a very strong leg. Drives it down into the end zone and it's over the head of Ty Chandler. For a touchback down on the field here's Holly Rowe. Well guys Tennessee wanted to make a change at quarterback here. Brian Moore the true freshman getting his first career start. Jim Chaney the offensive coordinator said they were just looking for a little something else spirit or zest for their offense and this young man provides it. I can tell you in pregame warm ups he was a little bit nervous but nervous excited very accurate but bouncing around you can tell he's excited to get his first start tonight. Understandably so. After 18 straight starts at quarterback for Jarrett Garantano, Maurer is the quarterback. He gives it to Ty Chandler, who's ahead for about 16, out to the 41 yard line, and a Tennessee first down. Great block by Wanye Morris, the left tackle, really got two blocks on that play, and that's the kind of start you want for your freshman quarterback. Establish a little bit of that running game, set up some play action, get your quarterback his feet on the ground here. One of the positives for Tennessee so far has been the play of the offensive line. Jeremy Pruitt said it's been better than he anticipated given they're playing with two freshman tackles. Maurer checks it down incomplete. No help there as it was dropped in the flat by Dominic Wood Anderson the tight end somebody they want to get more involved in the offense. There's Maurer's mom Kyla Lester. Brian's a Freshman from Ocala, Florida. Did play in their last game. Both of these teams had a bye week last week. But two weeks ago, Maurer got into the game in Florida in the second half. Jordan Davis is the injured Georgia defender. And he is a big part of this Georgia defense. This defense has been outstanding through the first four games, particularly in stopping the run. And he is kind of the anchor of that run defense playing at the nose tackle position a very big man and uh, somebody who has been a big part of their success through the early part of the season. Well, I know you feel like in the four years under Kirby Smart this is the best defensive team that he's had. It's the most talented you know they've recruited so well over the last several years and you're starting to see that on the defensive side of the ball. They have a lot of depth. They play a lot of people a lot of key contributors that are starter like quality players but they don't have many stars you know they just got a lot of really good football players and uh, that's led to outstanding defense here in the first part of the year. And they're helping Davis up now he is a big man 6'6 330 sophomore out of Charlotte was ahead of schedule a year ago he started last season on the scout team and by the end of the season he worked his yeah. way all the way up into the starting lineup on their team that went to the Sugar Bowl. Not putting a lot of pressure on that leg right now. Again they have depth so they have other guys to roll in there but he's just been a big factor. You saw Michael Barnett who's in the middle now of that defense big number 94. Senior out of Ridgeville South Carolina on second and ten the toss to Ty Chandler. He escaped 
well behind the line of scrimmage from Tay Crowder, but Richard LeCount, excellent safety. In fact, one of their leading tacklers for the year came up to make the play. Well, Crowder had a great game against Notre Dame. Here he is. He's going to time the snap and get into the backfield. He doesn't make the tackle, as you said, Sean, but he slows the play down. And then you see the speed and LeCount filling from his safety position, but very fast, aggressive defense. There's the third down and 11. They come after Maurer and another drop. It was a low throw for Jawan Jennings. Fifth year receiver. They feel like they have playmakers at yeah. the receiver position, but you kind of got a little microcosm of Tennessee's offense to this point in the season and on the, that possession. The two guys they want to get the ball to is Jennings and the first pass to Dominic Wood Anderson, the tight end. One was a little bit behind, one was a little bit low. Bauer needs to be on target with those short throws. Joe Doyle on the punt for the balls. And Dominic Blaylock back deep for it. True freshman. Taylor Simmons had a muffed punt that was costly in that win against Notre Dame. They've given Blaylock some chances, and he makes a fair catch at the 16 yard line. 44 yard punt for the sophomore, Joe Doyle. And here comes Jake Fromm. Now well, Jake Fromm is off to a terrific start. I mean, he's a three year starter. This is his 33rd consecutive start. He's so efficient. This year he's completing 76% of his passes. He's had zero turnovers. He's only been sacked one time. And I think because of that efficiency, he doesn't get enough credit for how good of a quarterback he is. He's an NFL caliber quarterback and a great leader of this football team. Those 33 consecutive starts, longest active streak among quarterbacks in the FBS. He's 27 and five as the starting quarterback at the University of Georgia. Hands it off to DeAndre Swift. Nothing doing. Shoved out of bounds along the far sideline by Kenneth George, a cornerback. And here are tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. Swift, one of the best running backs, certainly in the country. Todd and Lawrence Cager's been a nice addition, graduate transfer from Miami. Yeah, they had a couple guys that they lost early at that wide receiver position, went into the draft early, and Cager has been a, a huge addition. Daniel Batuli coming back from a knee injury, one of the leaders of their defense, and that's Henry Toa Toa, a true freshman who's their leading tackler for the year, top prospect. He's played well. From on target, there is Lawrence Cager. He's a yard short of the first down, third and one for the Bulldogs. James Coley, the offensive coordinator, recruited Cager to Miami and loves him. Georgia got up very quickly, and Swift has the first down out to the 29. I think because of the familiarity of these two coaching staffs, not just Jeremy Pruitt and Kirby Smart, we're going to see a lot more tempo, particularly on third downs, to keep from substituting and making those things happen. James Coley's the coordinator this year because Georgia's offensive coordinator from last year is now the offensive yeah. coordinator at Tennessee, Jim Chaney. In his first year here on Jeremy Pruitt's staff, there are six coaches on the Tennessee staff who have coached at the University of Georgia, including Jeremy Pruitt. After the fake, Fromm fires, caught. First down with the forward progress for Cager out to the 42 yard line, a gain of 12. We had five catches for 82 yards and a, an important touchdown against Notre Dame in their last game. He's a big target. He's a very good blocker on the perimeter as well at 6'5", 220 pounds. And again, his addition, along with another transfer wide receiver, Demetrius Robertson from Cal Berkeley, they're their two leading receivers right now after four games. They have Samir White, redshirt freshman in at running back. One of the things they decided during the bye week was they wanted to get White more involved early in the game. Flag thrown as White's Wrestled down after a two yard gain. The referee leading this SEC crew is David Smith. We're going to get holding on Georgia. Georgia with one change. They have a very good offensive line. One of the strengths of their team. One change in the starting lineup tonight. Justin Schaefer is starting at left guard instead of holding Solomon Kinley. Number 55 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Free play, first down. It's the center, Trey Hill, called for the hold. Solomon Kinley. Injured his left ankle early in the game against Notre Dame. Schaefer saw a lot of action in his place against the Irish. Played 41 snaps. He's a junior. 
Now they are big and they are physical, and as the game wears on, they really start to have their effect because of their mass. Brian Harrion in as the running back, perhaps the block as they load up with wide receivers. Robertson shifted to the left, and he's the target. Robertson with excellent speed across midfield and belted down at the Tennessee 40. That's a gain of 28 for Georgia. James Coley said we need more explosive plays and we need them early in the game and he just got one. Well watch the block by Charlie Warner the tight end number 89. He got the key block on the perimeter and then excellent north and south running by Robertson after he caught that screen. Transfer from Cal. He caught 50 balls as a freshman as a freshman All-American he broke Sean Jackson's record for catches by a freshman at Cal broke Keenan Allen's freshman receiving yardage record in that season and he had 767. Harrion picking his way to the left knocked down just shy of the 35 yard line. Well they lost five of their Top six pass catchers from a year ago, so they've reloaded with transfers. Robertson, Cager, and Eli Wolf, who last year played here for the Tennessee Vols. Yeah, Eli Wolf in three years at Tennessee had nine catches for 86 yards. He's already got seven for 96 yards this year, so uh, he's having a fun year this year playing. He was excited to play against his old team. He said, I wish them well, except when they play against us. He had a good experience here at Tennessee, and obviously he's close to a lot of these ball players, not on the field right now. DeAndre Swift, powerful run, and a first down to the 25 yard line. 12 more for Georgia, swiftly on the move on their opening possession. Uh, DeAndre Swift is one of the best running backs in college football. He's the feature guy now. He's kind of waited his turn. He ran for over a thousand yards last year. As did his running mate Elijah Holyfield. Swift goes again. Matter of fact, they're the only team in the country that's had four different players rush for a thousand yards over the last two seasons. Both Holyfield and Swift did it. And there's Darren Swift, who uh, obviously needs to get in the gym. DeAndre's dad. Be hard to say no to that guy if your dad told you to run a couple <laughs> extra laps, right? His dad is a trainer, as you might expect from looking at him. Spends a lot of time in the gym himself. DeAndre is known to go work out after midnight. Second and eight. It's Zamir White again. Fights for a first down. Stayed on his feet just shy of the line to make. And bounced ahead to the 12. Daryl Taylor and Daniel Batuli combine on the stop for Tennessee. Boy, what a block by Isaiah Wilson, the right tackle. Just caved in the middle of that. Tennessee defense Isaiah Wilson an outstanding right tackle he was hurt he didn't start the Notre Dame game and they felt like they he was okay to play wanted to play came in and played the second half and I really thought when he was in the game the Georgia offense kind of took control of things at the line of scrimmage he's been dealing with a lower leg injury 10th play of the opening drive for Georgia Plenty of time for Fromm. Wide open receiver out wide. It's DeAndre Swift. Kenneth George made the tackle. We mentioned they lost five of their top six receivers from a year ago. Swift, the only one in the top six yeah. year goes back as a running back. He had 32 catches last year. Good for third on the team. And that's why I think he is such a projectable guy at the next level. Not only a great runner, a physical runner, but a guy can make can miss. But he's also excellent out of the backfield. And when he was young and they had Michelle and Chubb, he was more of a receiving back than he was a running back. Second and one for Georgia from the two yard line. Swift got the first down, not the touchdown. It'll be first and goal. Dogs from the one and nearly midway through this fast moving first quarter. There's Jeremy Pruitt second season as head coach here and already starting to get a little heat particularly for this disappointing one and three start a year that began with an unthinkable loss to Georgia State here in Knoxville they were five and seven in his first year last year. Swift straight ahead touchdown Georgia.
just ran right into the back of a couple of his blockers right here and then just bounces himself to the right. Right in there, he doesn't have the touchdown yet, but the second effort gets him into the end zone. Good push on that right side and a very methodical, efficient, productive drive for the Georgia Bulldogs. From four for four for 59 yards on the drive, and as you saw, Swift had 20 yards and six carries. Blankenship makes the extra point. He's now made a school record 176 PATs in a row. DeAndre Swift, the junior from Philadelphia, with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. All right. Thank you, Mark. Welcome, everybody. Those of you who just watched Virginia Tech in Miami, one of the wildest games of the season, we welcome you to Knoxville, Tennessee, where Georgia has just scored. We make it seven to nothing. Rodrigo Blankenship, the kickoff for the Bulldogs. It will be a touchback. We welcome you to Neyland Stadium. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge will be rejoined in a moment by Holly Rowe. Delighted to have you with us. And Todd, uh, the story for Tennessee, a new starting quarterback right. after 18 straight starts by Jarrett Garantano. They've gone tonight to a true freshman and Brian Maurer, who on their opening possession really didn't get much help, a couple of drop passes. Yeah, they weren't perfect passes. They're hoping he can give some more juice to this offense. He's an athletic kid, has the ability to make some plays with his arms and his legs, and that's what they're really hoping he can have that kind of effect on the offense tonight. They got one first down on the opening possession and then punt it. He hands it off here to Tim Jordan, and then Georgia took the ball 84 yards and 12 plays. And here's the information you need to know about Brian Maurer, true freshman, prolific passer at Westport High School in Ocala, Florida, where he set the county record for passing yards in a season last year, better than 3,500. They have some good looking wide receivers and tight ends. They just have not consistently got them the football here in the first part of the year. Maurer given time, throwing deep and has an open receiver. Marquez Callaway all the way. Touchdown, Tennessee. That's Maurer's mother, Kyle Lester, who likes the second series of this game a lot more for the Tennessee offense than she enjoyed the first. 73 yards, their longest play of the year. Well, they really fooled Richard LeCount, a veteran safety, on a little double move there for the touchdown. Here's Brent Samaglia to tie it. Outstanding kicker. Both of these teams have... One of the best kickers in the country. We're tied at seven. Well, we have a development down in Miami. Let's send you back to Matt Berry. Wow, wild game. Virginia Tech led at one point 28 to nothing and the Tennessee Volunteers needed something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I mean that's the kind of juice. Listen to this crowd. You got to do something to get the crowd in. Get them behind you. Get your team feeling good because it's been an ugly start for this football team. Well we spoke with the head coach Jeremy Pruitt the offensive coordinator Jim Chaney for Tennessee yesterday about the quarterback change. They felt like They've missed a lot of plays that were there to be made, and a lot of it was on the quarterback. They said Garantano had an excellent spring and summer. They thought he was going to have a terrific year. Then the season started, and all of a sudden, he was yeah. missing plays that were there. Well, and he's, to his credit, he has handled things great in this benching and still being a leader and work right there working with Maurer is awesome to see. But Maurer, what he did on this play, first of all, he got great protection. Callaway is going to be up here at the top. He's going to run a double move in and then go. And the guy who's going to get beat is that veteran safety, Richard LeCount. Watch him break on the in route and lose deep leverage. And the protection was good enough to allow Maurer to launch that ball down the field. That one was perfectly thrown. And Callaway, we mentioned they've got some good wideouts. And that's the kind of play the Volunteers needed early in this football game. 
to see the energy in Maurer. Coach Cheney said he has some juice. Yeah. And when you're one and three with losses to Georgia State and BYU to start the year 0 2 for the first time since 1988, yeah. it's a program that needs a little energy right now. It's funny. I was talking to Chris Winkie, his quarterback coach, down the field before the game. And he said the kid is not nervous. There's Chris right to his left. He said he talked to him during their walk. He said, How'd you sleep last night? He said, I slept great. And the kid said, actually, last week or the last game, he's a Florida kid. When they played in Gainesville and he knew he might get in the game, he had a worse night's sleep and was more nervous going into that game on the road than he was being the starter in this one here at home. Maybe some of mom's friends were letting her know she got some air time. <laughs> yeah, Brian. Maurer came off the bench to start the second half in their last game. Each of these two teams last played two weeks ago. They were both off a bye week. He came in for Garantaro at the start of the third quarter, played three series, and then Garantaro came back into the game. But that one has ignited the crowd, the crowd that easily probably could have turned a little bit ugly if they hadn't done something to bring them to life. Especially with as easy as Georgia scored on its opening possession. Axton Brooks's kickoff is a touchback. This season, Taco Bell celebrating student sections, passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. The Tennessee Vol Student Section is already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention. Use the hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. Well, now this crowd would love to see this Tennessee defense get a stop. A three and out would send him into a frenzy. A 12 play touchdown drive on their opening possession. Jake Fromm on target. George Pickens, the true freshman, taken down immediately by Alante Taylor. And that's good news for Tennessee. They weren't sure he'd be able to play tonight. Battling a little hip flexor. The starting corner all four games has been Warren Burrell, a true freshman. He is okay to play, but has not taken the field yet either. But, Sean, you see how calm Jake Prom is. I mean, right after that touchdown, the crowd's going crazy. He's got calm feet, calm presence in the pocket, reads his progression, and makes a nice throw to bring up second and short. Five for five to start the game. He is the most accurate passer. In Georgia history, 66% for his career. Here's Tyler Simmons trying to turn the corner, and he's wrestled out of bounds for a loss. Chased out by Sean Schamberger, the junior from Mobile. Well, Toa Toa was giving chase first, and that forced the runner to keep going wide. Watch the middle linebacker, Toa Toa, number 11, forced the play wide, and then Schamberger maintained his leverage on the outside of the defense, and it was a loss of yardage play. Here's that opportunity for a three and out for the volunteer. There's Toa Toa, highly touted freshman out of Sacramento, California. Tennessee won the recruiting battle with Washington and Alabama to get him and he's their leading tackle three man rush lots of time for from good coverage now he launches one in a wide open DeAndre Swift out of bounds inside the 30. Now, this just can't happen when you rush three and drop eight you can't lose this kind of coverage. I mean, that's Bryce Thompson, the corner, number 20, whose eyes were in the backfield, and there was no help over the top. It's third down and decent yardage. You're only rushing three. You're dropping eight. That can't happen. And unfortunately, that's the same kind of play that happened that cost them the BYU game late in that football game on a third down. Well, they gave away that game here on September 7th. Lost 29-26. 44-yard gain for Fromm to Swift. Again, just a three-man rush. From to the end zone. Caught. Flagged down. Lawrence Cager caught it. Bryce Thompson indicating that Cager pushed off. Well, Bryce Thompson lost his helmet on the play. So there's a he might have a good argument on this play. David Smith, the referee leading this SEC crew.
They like looking for him in the red zone, in the goal line. He's so big, and he bodies guys up. He had a great back shoulder catch against Notre Dame, and he pulled him down and then elevated for the football. Thompson was in good position, did not have an opportunity to make a play on the ball. There's the pull down, and that's an excellent call of pass interference. Side judge Alex Moore right there. Cager doesn't need to do that. He's 6'5", and when he was in high school, he was the Maryland State yeah. high jump champ at 6 feet 9 inches. He's been a very nice addition to this Georgia team, which needed an infusion of talent at wide receiver. From after a pump, finds Matt Landers, redshirt sophomore, at the 34-yard line. Not much on the play there for the dogs. And Kenneth George is the starting corner tonight in for the injured freshman Warren Burrell. Nice play on that play. Second and 19. Nothing phases Jake Fromm. That, that's the thing you see. I mean, there's just, you see it in his eyes, you see it in his footwork. Juggling and dropping Tyler Simmons with Daniel Batuli, the linebacker, trying to chase him down in the flat. Give these fans credit. Wasn't exactly a happy week here in Knoxville with the one and three start. Some off the field news that wasn't very attractive. They dismissed Jeremy Banks, a linebacker from the team yesterday or a couple of episodes off the field, which we'll chronicle more deeply later. Well, they rushed three and dropped eight the last third down. It did not work, showing a four-man rush on this particular third down. A draw. DeAndre Swift spun down by Jaquan Blakely, Georgia native, redshirt junior from Moultrie, Georgia. Nice play by Blakely. He shed his block. He held his ground. Red draw all the way. You run that on third and long, hoping to fool those defensive players, and that didn't fool them at all. They're going to try a long field goal, a 50-yarder. And Rodrigo Blankenship has plenty of leg to do it. Four out of five for his career from 50-plus, including the Rose Bowl record 55-yarder in the national semifinal against Oklahoma. Slight breeze at his back. That one is dead down the middle and good. And he's nine for nine in field goals for the season. 10-7 Georgia, two and a half to go in the fourth. Football is presented by Hampton by Hilton. College football stays here. Book now at Hampton.com. And in part by the all-new 2020 Lincoln Aviator. One of the cool aspects of a home game here at Neyland Stadium, the Ball Navy dates back to the early 1960s. Former broadcaster George Mooney frustrated with traffic around the stadium decided to use his boat to get here. They didn't have any docks at the time. He tied his boat to a tree, climbed through the rocks and weeds to get to the stadium. And now nearly 60 years later, they average 200 vessels per home game dock along the Tennessee River. Blankenship's kickoff is a touchback. Here's Holly. Well, a big development for this Georgia defense. Kirby Smart, the head coach, said the most critical matchup of the game would be their nose tackle, Jordan Davis, against the center of this Tennessee offensive line. Well, Jordan Davis, 6'6", 330, is out for the game. He will not return with a left ankle injury. They actually had to cart him off the field. We don't have a prognosis on that, but that is a huge development on this Georgia defensive front. And Riley Lockshear, the uh, Lockyer, the right guard, fell into him accidentally. Ryan Bauer, after the run fake, dumped it off. Dominic Wood Anderson, the tight end, a 16-yard play across the 40 to the 41. Uh, you could see in practice on Thursday that they wanted to get him the football. He's a junior college transfer from Arizona Western. Very athletic, big body, and just coming into tonight only five catches and they've already thrown it to him twice in the ball game in the first quarter 6'4", 257 excellent athlete was a quarterback in high school in San Diego 
On first and ten, Maurer has definitely brought some life to this Tennessee offense. He fired a strike to Jawan Jennings, and he's to the Georgia 41 with another first down. Well, they went three wide receivers into the boundary. Georgia a little loose on their coverage on the field side. It was an empty backfield, and Maurer looks very comfortable right now in Jim Chaney's offense. And when you got a freshman quarterback that's feeling it, you feel a little bit more confident in your play calling. Back to back plays of 16 and 17. Maurer retreating as he felt pressure coming and an incomplete pass for Dominic Wood Anderson. College football primetime next Saturday, 8 p.m. How about this matchup? Florida and LSU, both victorious today. A huge win for Florida as they knocked off number seven, Auburn today, 24 to 13. Well, both teams undefeated. LSU beat Utah State today. Five more passing touchdowns and one on the ground for Joe Burrow. Mauer again, backpedaling. He throws it away. What do you think that atmosphere is going to be like oh in gosh. Baton Rouge for two undefeated <laughs> yeah. teams in a night game on yeah. a Saturday night? That is what the doctor ordered when you go down there, man. That kind of atmosphere, that kind of game, high stakes. Wow. Mauer three for seven. He was four for 11 in his relief appearance in the swamp two weeks ago. The only other game he played in was their only win of the year. The shutout 45 nothing of Chattanooga. Game three of the season. The officials having a conversation about what we are not well, quite sure. They might be thinking whether it was intentional ground. There is no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside the tackle box. Second down. Yeah, he definitely threw it away. Correction, third down. These are the situations, you know, you want to avoid for your quarterback. They tried to throw it on first and second down, incomplete. Third and ten against Kirby's defense. They're very complex. I thought you were going to say they don't like to be in third and ten. <laughs> I'm going to challenge you to find a team that likes to be in third right. and ten. Now we're on target and a leaping catch made by Marquez Callaway for the first down with a yard to spare. Callaway does a great job of getting past the sticks. He knows what the first down is, so even when he's hit and moves in front of the sticks, his forward progress gets him the first down. But he had to run that route and then did a beautiful job shielding his body from D.J. Daniel. Like a, a rebounder in basketball, excellent job by Callaway. 6-2-2-0-4. He had the 73-yard touchdown. Here's Ty Chandler. Weaving to the 25 that touchdown play was the longest pass for the ball since 2015 Josh Dobbs to Josh Malone for 75 yards in a game at Kentucky in late October. Trey Smith the starting left guard the injured player for Tennessee. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Georgia and Tennessee in a rivalry that dates all the way back to 1899. The good news for Tennessee, Trey Smith ran off the field. Brian Johnson has come in. Experienced player. He's started 19 games along the offensive line for Tennessee. He's the left guard. Mauer after the fake throws a slant first down. Jawan Jennings driven back, but they're going to mark it inside the 17 yard line, and Tennessee is on the move again with under a minute to go in the first quarter. It's an RPO play. The line was blocking a run to the left. They had two tight ends on the left side to overload that side. Maurer didn't like the numbers in the run game and opted for the throw, and it was another accurate throw on time. And what Jim Chaney was hoping this quarterback would give the team. He's given it to him. Juice, energy, it's affected the offense, it's affected the defense, and it's affected the crowd. And as I mentioned, he's a top prospect. Good size, 6'3". They want to add some muscle to him. He's 193 pounds, but he's demonstrated a strong arm. He throws it to the end zone over the head of Marquez Callaway. You know, he had a step, too. Callaway had a step on D.J. Daniel, and the safety was underneath, was not going to come over the top. 
That ball just a little bit too far outside, but they had what they looked for. Two seconds in the quarter. There's Jim Chaney. Came over here from Georgia. Said he really enjoyed his time with Kirby Smart. They remain close, but he had coached here before under Derek Dooley and Lane Kiffin. He and his wife really liked Knoxville. They offered him a lot of money to come here, a million and a half a year. So he's with the balls. Mauer on the run. Incomplete. Roughing the passer, though. He, he threw that ball away because there was nothing there. And they're going to get David Marshall with a, a late hit on the quarterback. And that's a gift play for Tennessee because it was going to be third and long again. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 51 on the defense. Don't half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Senior from Thomaston, Georgia, David Marshall. We will have, there will be one untimed down. One untimed down. Absolutely the right call. I mean, not only did he hit him well after the throw, but he extended his arms and you know, just unnecessary. And Maurer is a true freshman, but he has already learned how to sell the call a little <laughs> bit there as well. With some acrobatics through the air. So it's first and goal now from the eight. Georgia defense has yet to give up a rushing touchdown all season. Tennessee would love to punch one in on the ground here. They'd only given up four touchdowns total in the first four games combined. They crowd the line. Maurer after the fake. That's a play that Jim Cheney made Barry going forward. Walter Grant, Barry Maurer for a loss to end a very entertaining first quarter. Number three, Georgia on the road trying to get to 5 0 for the season, leading 10 to 7. College football primetime is brought to you by Hampton by Hilton. With more than 2,500 locations, you can follow your team anywhere. Sean McDonough top Blackledge and Holly Rowe at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Very entertaining first quarter. Georgia leads 10 to 7, but it's Tennessee on the move. Ball's a 24 and a half point underdog here tonight. A spirited performance from the new starting quarterback, Ryan Maurer. You saw that Trey Smith, number 73, has come back in to the offensive line. After the fake, it's a touchdown. Jawan Jennings. The quick pop after the run fake. Mauer right on target. Threaded the needle. And Tennessee leads in the second quarter. He cannot wait any longer to throw that, and he can't throw it any further towards the middle. Because he was the furthest inside slot receiver, he was matched up on a safety, J.R. Reed. He beat him inside immediately, and Maurer was on time with the football. There's Brent Samaglia trying to make it 200 straight PATs by Tennessee kickers, and he does. And Tennessee leads by four. Here's tonight's Southwest Airlines drive recap. Well, here's Jennings, and that means this is a safety. And this route is going to be inside, but he can't throw it too far inside so that other safety can make a play. He throws it perfectly on time in the right spot, and Jennings comes down with the touchdown. That's excellent execution. For those of you who are just joining us, that's Brian Maurer's mom, Kyla Lester. Well, Jim Cheney, Jeremy Pruitt said he'll bring some energy. Jeremy Pruitt was very honest. He said, I'm not sure he's ready to play, but our team feels like he's ready to play. Well, and he feels like he gives them the best chance to win. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, you know, whether it's tonight or next week or whatever, that's why the decision was made. And uh, he has proven them all to look pretty smart right about now. And to a man, including Coach Pruitt, they all believe they're much better than one and three. Absolutely. Jeremy Pruitt said, I think we're much better than we were a year ago. And the players, didn't you get the sense, Todd, were extremely positive. And it Absolutely. wasn't just lip service. They really believe they're going to turn this thing around sooner rather than later. They know they basically gave away the first two games of the year. 
Paxton Brooks's kickoff is a touchback. UFC 243 tonight from Melbourne, Australia. The main event on pay per view features the champ Robert Whittaker taking on the interim champ Israel Ansanya in the middleweight championship unification bout. That starts at 10 Eastern Time, 7 Pacific. To order the main card in English and Spanish, go to ESPNplus.com slash PPV. Be sure to download the ESPN app if you're watching on your mobile device. ESPN2 and ESPN Deportes will have the prelims starting at 8 Eastern. That's just moments away. You know, Sean, the other good thing about that drive, it took a little bit around three minutes. Rest that defense. Couldn't ask for more. Jet sweep action. Tyler Simmons got away from the penetration, got banged out of bounds after a four yard gain by the cornerback Bryce Thompson after DeAndre Johnson whiffed. They want to get Tyler Simmons a little bit more involved. They tried to throw it to him earlier. He was not able to make the catch. He was the guy who muffed the punt against Notre Dame two weeks ago that set up Notre Dame's first touchdown of the game. They want to get him confident back involved. Well, they took advantage of the bye week to do a lot of self-analysis. One of the things James Coley said is we haven't tried to get the ball to him enough. Simmons had three catches prior to tonight. Doesn't have one so far tonight. The pass caught Simmons again. First down at the 38-yard line shoved out by Theo Jackson, the junior safety from Nashville. And that's a good case of a quarterback and wide receiver being on the same page. It was a corner blitz from the short side of the field, and Jake Fromm just threw it right into that area that was vacated by the corner. As usual, Fromm very accurate. Last year completed more than 67% of his passes, 12th in the country. Eight out of nine is from. And just a three man rush and a deep throw up for grabs and Cager. Wow. Makes the catch. Was he in bounds? Yes, say the officials. Inside the 30 yard line of Tennessee. Well, we'll have to see his feet, but what an incredible catch and concentration. You know, I'm not sure if he had control of the ball. It's close. What an effort, though. Beautiful throw. The elbow hits out of bounds, and I thought the ball shifted a little bit as well. well here's the view the nearest official had from his hat cam. And as they start the review, we'll take a break. 14 to 10, Tennessee on top early in the second quarter. After further review, the receiver did not maintain possession of the ball. Now he ran by Alante Taylor. It was a tremendous effort by Cager and a beautiful throw by Jake Fromm, but you could see as he hit the ground, the ball was still moving. He didn't control it all the way through the ground, hitting the ground. Well, no question. The replay review yielded the correct result. John Bible, the replay official. We had him last week, didn't we? Yes. Wasn't he our guy last week? So it's second and ten. Back at their own 38. Just the second incompletion in ten throws by Jake Fromm. Brian Harrion. Terrible tackling by Tennessee and a big run for Harrion. Wow, this should have been a, about a two yard gain at the most. But credit Harriet for just saying, if you're not going to wrap up, then I'm not going to go down. There's a, a grab, a grab, just a shove. I mean, you've got to wrap up and get him to the ground. And Brian Harriet just running north and south and running with some authority there. For a 41 yard gain, the worst defender on that Tennessee defense was number 12, Sean Schamberg, who just tried to shoulder bump him down to the ground. Harrion played a lot of short yardage situations. He has scored three goal line touchdowns this year. Veteran of that running back group, senior out of Douglasville, Georgia. And you, you got to have so much respect for a guy like that. He's a guy who's waited his turn. You know? I mean, he was always the low man on the totem pole in that running back room. And now as a senior, he's getting more carries than he's had at any point in his career. And, uh, he started the opener at Vanderbilt. 
Well, that was his first career start, at the beginning of his senior season. They won at Vanderbilt, and home wins against Murray State, Arkansas State, and Notre Dame on their way to 4 0. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, right now the clock is not working. The officials down here on the field working on it right now. They're going to start keeping the time on the field. They've synced their watches up, and unless they can get that fixed, they'll just keep the time on their clocks on their wristwatch. While they continue to fix the clock situation, let's check in with Matt Barry. Okay, Sean, have your Coors Light studio update. We head to Oxford to check in on Ole Miss. And John Rice Plumlee, 33-yard touchdown run for him. Early on, 10-0 Ole Miss over Vanderbilt on SEC Network. All right, Matt, thank you. Here it is 14 to 10, Tennessee, leading number three, Georgia. Trying to beat a top 10 team for the first time in forever. The Vols haven't defeated a top 10 team since 2006 when they beat then 10th ranked Georgia. 51-33 yeah. in Athens. Philip Fulmer was still the coach back then. The play clock and the game clock are not working properly. The time and the play clock will be kept on the field. There's 13 minutes, 32 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Now the play clock not working is one thing. The play clock not working, that, that's tough. Well, let's bring in Bill Lamagne. How will they handle this now, our rules expert? Well, our back judge is going to keep the 2540 clock, and he'll give hand signals if they start getting down to a 10-second or 5-second mark. The side judge is, or field judge is going to be responsible for the game clock. And with the radios, they're going to be able to, to uh, get the communication in to the other officials and to the coaches. Now, my question is, how are the quarterbacks going to know how much time they have left to snap the ball? Back judge, when it gets down to 10 seconds, is going to raise his hand in the air. And generally at a five-second mark, he'll start to count it off. <laughs> like a basketball official. Correct. On an inbounds play with the bending of the elbow. So it's first and 10. It's DeAndre Swift, and it's second and 10. Good penetration by Darrell Middleton, big number 97, junior college transfer out of East Mississippi. And you could see just out of instinct, Jake Fromm looked up at the 25 second clock. He looked up at the play clock, realized it wasn't moving, and he's got to find where his eyes can go to the back job. Now, would the referee. David Smith have told these quarterbacks if you want to know the time look at the back judge. Yes that should have been a communication to the quarterback and they make need to make sure that Tennessee knows that too. Mm -hmm. There's the back judge has the responsibility for the uh, play clock is Swift up the middle behind a big and veteran offensive line Jeremy Pruitt when we visited yesterday said this offensive line for Georgia is as impressive as any he can remember in college football four starters back from last year they average over 328 pounds per starter and they've got depth I mean they've got backups that are really good players I mean Justin Schaefer is in there starting at left guard he got a huge block on that play right there on second down big third down and five Georgia on the move surprisingly behind by four early in the second quarter we're not exactly sure how early from time to the end zone batted around and incomplete looking for George Pickens and the coverage by Bryce Thompson and no flags on the play so the field goal team comes on for Georgia from is really good at throwing back shoulder throws where you kind of under throw it on purpose but Thompson did a great job. There was grabbing and pushing by both guys, but I thought Thompson did a great job of getting his eyes on the football and making a play through the ball. Well, the difficulties at the start of the year on their way to one and three. Some injuries and some suspensions. Bryce Thompson missed time for disciplinary reasons. Here's Blankenship now trying to go 10 for 10 for the year in field goals, and he does from 34 yards. We're in the second quarter. It's a one point lead for Tennessee.
ESPN College Football, brought to you by Mazda, Feel Alive, and the Alliance for Lifetime Income. Learn more at retireyourrisk.org. A wild game 2016 between these two teams. Each threw a Hail Mary pass in the final 10 seconds. It was Josh Dobb, Juwan Jennings in the end zone on the last play of the game for a 34 31 win. Coach Butch Jones. And since that win, Tennessee has gone 3 and 20 in SEC play. They did not win an SEC game two years ago in Butch Jones' final season as head coach here. They're leading Georgia tonight. You heard the referee say the clocks have been fixed. Game and play clock. And Blankenship with another touchback. Well, Brian Maurer has done everything that they could have hoped for. This was the touchdown on the double move to Marquez Callaway. Great protection allowed this move to develop. And then on time and on money with the deep throw. That was touchdown number one. Touchdown number two is a pure timing throw. After the play fake rises up on time on the money two touchdown passes for Brian Mauer right now he has to be very smart with a one point lead here in the second quarter started 0 for 2 but if you weren't with us a couple of balls that could have been caught there's Ty Chandler picking his way ahead for eight yards they've had a tough time running the ball this year but with success now in the passing game perhaps that'll make it a little bit easier for Ty Chandler and the other running backs I think this offensive line as they get better I like the backs I think they've got good backs Jim Cheney does a good job with moving tight ends and creating outflanking you with it in the running game their, their offensive line just needs to keep continuing to improve and not jump offside. <laughs> Don't go backwards. Full start. 56 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Riley Locklear, junior out of Huntington, West Virginia. Those plays don't seem like much, those kind of penalties, but they're huge. You know, you're you're second and three, and now you go back to second and eight. You're in your own territory. Those kind of plays can come back and, and bite you sometimes. Chandler remains the running back. They have four receivers, three to the right of Maurer, who looks in that direction, has his man. It's Jawan Jennings again, taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of 21 for Tennessee. He is just throwing with such confidence. This time, Jennings is the middle receiver, and he's going to run underneath. The linebacker, and that's just beautiful timing again by Maurer. There were three defenders in the area, but this is a quarterback now that's throwing with confidence, and that means he's getting rid of the football when he needs to. And the coach has said, we have playmakers at wide receiver. We just haven't been able to get them the ball to make plays. Well, Maurer is doing that. That's four catches for Jennings. He wants to throw it deep. He does. And it's off the hands of Dominic Wood Anderson, who looked like he was coming open near the 25-yard line. That was a max protection. They kept a lot of guys in the block. It was a good play action fake. It was only two receivers. The wide receiver on the sideline was running deep, and Wood Anderson was running across the field. It was very good coverage by Georgia downfield. Very tight window to try to throw that football. Jordan Davis knows for the Georgia defense injured earlier as Holly said not going to return tonight freshman All-American last year Tim Jordan tripped up just shy of the first down good tackle by Richard LeCount the junior safety to prevent that first down and perhaps more for Tennessee really nice job by the tight end Austin Pope that was a corner blitz right into that run should have never been able to make a, a yard on that. Eric Stokes was coming on a blitz, and at the last second, Austin Pope saw the corner blitz, got a piece of the block, and that enabled him to get upfield for a positive game. Big third down and two. Almost a three to one edge in time of possession for Georgia, but the lead for Tennessee and Malik Herring throws down Tim Jordan for a loss. Well, it was Ty Crowder again, though, first that caused the problem. Herring is going to get the tackle, but watch Crowder again time the blitz and come right into here and force the running back to go to the other side of the play. And he ran right into the arms of Malik Herring. 
His run defense has been the best in the SEC for Georgia. 57 yards per game allowed and a lot more tackles behind the line of scrimmage than a year ago. They're trying to create havoc along the line of scrimmage. Here's Joe Doyle to punt just trying to pin Georgia down there and he shanks it. Just a horrible kick almost sideways. They're going to mark it at the 34 yard line. It's a 13 yard punt. Kick off your week five NFL Sunday with the countdown crew on ESPN and the ESPN app at 10 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Our Sunday NFL countdown crew will have all the early breaking stories injury updates. They'll preview each game. They'll take you right up to kickoff. And then we'll cap off week five of the NFL's 50th season of Monday Night Football on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app with the Cleveland Browns and the San Francisco 49ers. How about those Niners undefeated? Monday Night Countdown kicks off the coverage at 6 p.m. Eastern. I think they need to look to throw the ball to DeAndre Swift out of the backfield a little bit here. Three receivers bunch the left. They handed to Swift up the middle for about four. Darrell Middleton made the tackle for Tennessee. In this offensive line, so big and physical, and where it really shows up or has so far this season is in the second half of games. They don't get a lot of explosive run plays in the first half, but those bigger running plays tend to come later in the game because of the, the weight and the mass and the strength of this offensive line. James Cook, the running back now, the younger brother of Dalvin Cook, former Florida State star, now with the Minnesota Vikings. They fake it to Cook, and Fromm is spun down two yards short of the line to make by Matthew Butler. Here's third down and short for Georgia. Jake doesn't run it a lot, but he makes good decisions when he does run the football. Third and short, you got a lot of options here. It was just his sixth carry of the season in this, their fifth game. Third and a long one. Looked like Tennessee wasn't sure how to line up. Quick pass to the former ball, Eli Wolf. And he gets shoved out of bounds, but with plenty for a first down across midfield to the Tennessee 47. Sean, you're right. The little confusion there in the Tennessee defensive alignment. Jake Fromm sensed that. He felt that, and that's why he snapped the ball quickly. They didn't have enough guys out here on the three receivers until late. And that was an easy conversion because of the recognition of Jake Fromm. Jeremy Pruitt, the Tennessee coach, said he thinks Fromm does as good a job of this as any quarterback in the country. Managing the line of scrimmage, getting them into the right play, choosing the right receiver. Fires to the near sideline intended for Charlie Werner and incomplete with Nigel Warrior in primary coverage. He's the son of Dale Carter, the first round pick of the Kansas City Chiefs back in 1992 was a four time Pro Bowler. Well, Dad would be proud of that coverage. That was perfect coverage. I mean, there was no place for Jake Pop to throw the football. Charlie Warner, a big tight end, but I mean, that's perfect position on the coverage and very hard to, to drop a ball in on top of that. We hear announcers say he's a warrior. That guy really is <laughs> literally, literally a warrior. Second and ten. Swift slides ahead for almost five. He is the top rated quarterback by our draft guru, Todd McShay, running back, I should say, DeAndre Swift. He has indicated to some that this is likely to be his last season of college football, his junior year. With his dad looking on, Darren played at Delaware Valley. Looks like he still could. They're on the fringe of field goal range at the very least, but they'd like to pick up the first down. The Tennessee leading by a point as we approach six minutes to halftime. Look out for the rush. Fromm was wrapped up. He got it off to Herrian, who's taken down immediately. Revars Crouch, the true freshman linebacker, came on the pressure. You saw him take a wide twist to get there. Yeah, he sure did. I mean, here he is right here. He's going to come all the way around the end to get pressure on Jake Fromm. 
we punched out of that quickly because Georgia lined up very quickly to go for this on fourth down or at least to give the impression that they were so Tennessee quickly got a timeout fourth and five we'll see what Kirby Smart does after this. You're watching the SEC on ESPN on a beautiful night along the banks of the Tennessee River in Knoxville 76 degrees with a light breeze and after some contemplation the punter Jake Camarda has come out for Georgia facing fourth down and five at the Tennessee 42 yard line. Well he'll try to do what Joe Doyle was not able to do and that's pin Tennessee back deep. And that one. Looked like he hit it more left than he intended. Now I know that's harder to do than than we might think, but it's not that hard. You make that decision with that, the, you know, it's a strategic decision to kick the ball down there to put the deep, the offense on a long field, and both punters now have really failed in that exercise. You know, they work on it hundreds of reps during the week of practice. Kind of reminded me of you on the practice range at Whisper Rock. The <laughs> last time we had a chance to tee it up in Arizona, a lot of short and lefts. Holly, what do you have? Well, guys, one of the reasons it's very swirling wind down here, because this is enclosed bowl, the wind in the direction is very hard. I actually asked Kamarda before the game, how does the wind impact him? He said, I don't know. It's my first time punting here. I guess I'll figure it out. Well, he's still figuring that. Yeah. Not exactly a gale here. There is a breeze, but right now it's nine miles per hour. Quay Walker tripped up Eric Gray. No gain for the true freshman. Now, and again, for Brian Maurer, he's done everything right so far. He's 7 to 13, 160 yards, two touchdowns, has taken care of the football. But he's got to really make sure he takes care of it here as we move inside of five minutes before halftime. Georgia will get the ball to start the third quarter. He's got to take care of the football first and foremost. Still in possession of lead, under five minutes to go. Pressured, fires, just threw it away. And now there are flags as some players get tangled in the Tennessee bench area. That's Malik Herring, the Georgia Bulldog over there. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. Herring was being blocked, it looked like, all the way out of bounds. But it was a pass play and not a running play. Wanye Morris, the freshman left tackle, the other participant in that exchange. It was an ugly play all the way around. There was a miscommunication, obviously, between Maurer and Marquez Callaway. After the play was over, personal foul, number 64 on the offense. I mean, that's what it looked like to me. It looked like just after the play, it was just. Correction, second down. Well, obviously, by the time we spotted it deep in the bench area, whatever had happened, it already happened. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I got a correction, third down. Correction, it is third down. Yeah, Morris just continued to block all the way out of bounds on Malik Herring, and, uh, and that's a costly penalty. Now you've backed yourself up. Third and long, deep in your own territory. Yeah, you would think this would be a safe play here, but Absolutely. who knows? You're one in three. Your quarterback's been letting it rip pretty effectively. He's thrown for 160. Then his first college start, two touchdowns in less than a half. But they do stay on the ground, as you would think, and it's Ty Chandler out to the 16, and that's all. Mark Webb, the safety, made the tackle. And now hold your breath. Here comes a punt. But this time Joe Doyle's not trying to pin them in. So maybe right. just swinging freely. And he's had a good year. I mean, he's yes, had a he good has. year kicking the football. So he's a freshman All-American last year. Excellent punting tradition here at Tennessee. They have three punters in the NFL right now. Britton and Dustin Colquitt and Michael Pilardi. Minnesota. Kansas City and Carolina respectively. Good high punt and a fair catch made by Dominic Blaylock and Georgia will have good field position from its own 40 after a 43 yard punt. 
True South touches down in Beaumont to explore a singular and threatened barbecue style and a hundred year struggle between man and nature. And we're back in Knoxville, Tennessee. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, our producer Phil Dean, our director Scott Johnson. Big surprise here. I don't think the Tennessee Volunteers are surprised, no. but those uh, in the desert, as some of our colleagues like to say, <laughs> might be a little surprised as Tennessee was a 24 and a half point underdog, but they lead by a point with four minutes to go in the first half. I don't think George is that surprised either because they knew this was a dangerous team in Tennessee. Jake Fromm hands it off to Zamir White, talented redshirt freshman. Here, the Georgia fans chanting Zeus. That's his nickname. He's been battling a couple of ACL tears over the last couple of years. Yeah, going all the way back to November of 2017. And just good to see him back out there and of course, you know they had a similar thing with Nick Chubb. As Aubrey Solomon is down on the field, starting defensive end. Aubrey Solomon limping off, starting defensive end. Uh, Leesburg, Georgia, started his college career at Michigan, transferred here to Tennessee. Jake Fromm's got to cut one loose here on this drive. Has had one long pass to DeAndre Swift when there was a coverage breakdown. Hasn't really tried to challenge this Tennessee defense down the field. Had good protection all night. Has time to make that kind of throw. It's 10 out of 14 for 137. Gives it to Herrian, who powers for the first down across midfield to the ball's 47 yard line, where he was tackled by Greg Emerson. Georgia has all three of their timeouts here. 323 and a veteran quarterback. And Jake Fromm has just seen everything. He's done everything. He's hard to fool. And the guy you want in this situation. Short set on target. And Eli Wolf. Former Tennessee fall. Todd mentioned caught nine balls in three years as a Tennessee ball. He's now caught nine for Georgia in one season. Was prized to five games so far. From incomplete. It was Bryce Thompson to Tennessee nearest to it. There is a flag down on the play, known in the defensive backfield by the back judge. On the defense, number 35. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Daniel Batuli, senior leader of this Tennessee defense. You know, he's working on Eli Wolf right there in the middle of the screen. Had that left hand on the back of the jersey, got knocked off balance a little bit. Wow. Didn't you call that on just about every play? Well, it looked like the receiver initiated the contact also, but. Tough call going against the balls there. First down for Georgia. He's James Cook now out here as a wide receiver. They give it to him and it's a reverse. Here's Tyler Simmons. Great call by James Coley and well executed for a big play and a first down on a gain of 16 to the 12 yard line of Tennessee. Well, Simmons has really good speed. You're going to see Jake Fromm get a little bit of a block, and then DeAndre Swift, the starting tailback, with a lead block. And they get Simmons involved in the game plan with a run and a nice play for another first down. In that part of the field where Cager is a factor, he's at the top of the formation to the wide side of the field. Swift bounces outside and turns the corner. He's out of bounds. Shy of the first down, but close to it. Levaris Crouch, the freshman, and Bryce Thompson combining on the play for the Volunteers. Georgia poised to 
reclaimed the lead. They led seven to nothing. Tennessee tied it at seven. They led 10 7 to Georgia. Tennessee took the lead and has held it since. And it's caught by Cager for a touchdown with Alante Taylor draped all over him. There is a flag down. Now they love throwing that ball to him down there. He and Fromm, even though this is their first year together, they have a good feel for it. It's a back shoulder throw, and it takes timing, it takes accuracy, and Cager knows how to make that play. The result of the play is a touchdown. Illegal substitution on the defense. The penalty is declined. Touchdown. And what Jake Fromm saw that he, on this play, he saw single coverage, no safety help. You know, did they have an extra guy on the on the field? Yeah, they have it didn't 12 matter. On the field. They have 12, but it didn't matter because it was one on one on Cager, and that's all Jake Fromm needed. And here's Blankenship. He's kicked two field goals tonight. He hasn't missed a kick all year. Ten for ten in field goals. Now 23 for 23 and extra points. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Lawrence Cager, the touchdown catch for Georgia. His third of the season. Brad transferred from the University of Miami. Where he caught 21 balls all of last season. He's going to far surpass oh, yeah. that if he stays healthy. This year they lost Nicole Hardman drafted by Kansas City Riley Ridley drafted by Chicago Terry Godwin on the practice squad with the Jacksonville Jaguars from the wide receiver position off their Sugar Bowl team of last year. Well, Jake from definitely has a good feel <laughs> for Lawrence Cager. Fromm's first touchdown pass of the night. Pick up down to the goal line, a fair catch, they'll take it out. Last week, he had five catches for 82 yards. Three of them were back shoulder throws against Notre Dame, using that big body. This was a key touchdown. Perfect timing, perfect throw and placement. And just moments ago, we saw the same combination. Throw to that back shoulder, to the outside, very difficult to defend, especially when quarterback and receiver are on the same page like Fromm and Cager are. Let's see how Tennessee plays it with a true freshman quarterback making his first career start. And Brian Mowers played very well. They have two timeouts left. He throws, caught. Marquez Callaway out to the 46 yard line. Boy, Mauer looks like he's backing up Todd on a lot of these throws, but he puts them on the money. Yeah, I don't know how he was accurate on that one because he was backing up and throwing back across the middle. Devontae Wyatt with the pressure. Along the near sideline, Jawan Jennings, good run after the catch. He circled back, and it's a decision that paid wow. off. And look at the effort by Jennings, one of the team leaders, a fifth-year senior, and that has ignited the crowd. And with the clock the way it is, you wonder if that was the best decision to cut back inside, but he got the first down and a lot more. Well, they have plenty of time now, a minute and a half, and two timeouts there at the 33-yard line. Mauer to Chandler. Out of bounds at the 30 with Richard LeCount there for the Dogs. Good awareness by Mauer. There was a blitz coming from the field. He had to get rid of the ball quickly. He's done a good job of that tonight, getting rid of the football. He's thrown for 205. That's how much they've averaged per game for the season. Entering tight, exactly 205 passing yards per game on their way to one and three entering this one. We're just tuning in. He's a new starter, Jarrett Garantano. Redshirt junior from New Jersey had started 18 straight. That quarterback for Tennessee, deep throw, intended for Callaway. Crowd wanted a flag as he was single covered along the near sideline by Eric Stokes. Jeremy Pruitt wanted a flag as well. It looked like Stokes got away with a lot of contact on this play. It's single coverage. Now, 
not a whole lot. Not as much as I thought when I first saw it. They kind of let them chicken fight tonight, you know, on both sides. Which is why when they called Patuli for the play yep. on Wolf over the middle, I thought that was surprising yep. because that there was more on this play by Stokes than there was on that call that went against Tennessee. Third down and seven. Tennessee had to use a timeout because the play Talk clock out. was down Tennessee, to one. They're second. It's kind of a waste of a timeout, a but you don't want to take timeout. the penalty. 110 to go in the half. One timeout left for Jeremy Pruitt. And as he hollers at the officials, let's send you to Matt Berry. Okay, Sean, thank you. Coming up with the Mercedes Benz halftime report Ohio State, Michigan State locked in a defensive battle, plus Florida makes a statement at the swamp, and Texas goes on the road and gets Adam Morgantown with the win. Jesse Palmer and Joey Galloway join me coming up on the Mercedes Benz halftime report. All right, Matt, thanks. Let's bring in Bill Lamagne, our rules expert. Bill, on that long pass, you saw Jeremy Pruitt still barking at the uh, side judge, Alex Moore. What do you think? Well, they, they have been letting him play. And when there's chicken fighting and nobody's gaining an advantage, I thought on that last play, though, there was that last push or that last separation that took the, uh, gave the defender an advantage and put the receiver at a disadvantage. There's a third down and seven. They are in field goal range. Jennings in motion into the slot. Mauer running out of time, dumps it off, incomplete. Deflected off Marquez Callaway with Eric Stokes in coverage. And here comes Brent Samaglia, the outstanding kicker for Tennessee, who is nine for nine in field goals this season. As a matter of fact, he started the day with the most made field goals in the SEC, but uh, with a couple tonight. Blankenship has actually passed him, and neither one of them has missed a field goal. Blankenship's now 10 for 10. But this is a tester. It's 47 yards from the left hash mark. And there's his first miss. Wide left. He had made 11 in a row dating back to last season. Uh, credit Georgia that last defensive play that third down play was terrific coverage third and seven it was two deep man underneath and they were stuck to every receiver they forced a long field goal attempt and the first miss of the year and you see the rushing difference last year when these two teams play, Georgia outrushed Tennessee 251 to 66. So it's kind of on that same type of pace. And the rushing number, not a big surprise. Tennessee has struggled to run the football this season. Georgia, one of the best in the country against the run and best in the SEC. Georgia with all three timeouts now in 59 seconds. DeAndre Swift. Bust through a hole across midfield to the Tennessee 48 for a rumble of 22. You just can't let up. I mean, if you're Tennessee, you can't let up at this point in the game. From such a good decision maker, so important in situations like this, in the final minute on target to Swift again. Henry Toho Toho made the tackle. Excellent protection. Jake Fromm able to stay in the pocket. They call timeout now. You know, Jake Fromm, he, he's so impressive to me. He's very efficient. You can't fool him. He sees stuff. He goes through his progressions. He's going to go to his fourth read on this particular play. Of course, you have to have great protection for that, but he still gets it, makes the play. A little bit later, he sees that deep middle safety, so he knows the post is out of the question. He takes the outlet to the out. And then this time, he sees the corner blitz. He knows it's there. He throws right into that voided area. And then the last play, that back shoulder touchdown, which he and Lawrence Gager have just developed tremendous chemistry on. Jake Fromm, a typical Jake Fromm night. Very efficient, not flashy, but very productive.
Well, he needs 20 more yards to pass Mike Bobo for number six all time in passing yards at Georgia. And we talked when he came on the air, a lot of the audience didn't see it. But uh, when it's all said and done, he has a very good chance oh, to be yeah. regarded as the best quarterback in the history of the University of Georgia. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, and going beyond this and beyond the University of Georgia, the NFL guys really like him. I mean, they, they think he is an outstanding prospect. Some questions earlier in his career about his arm strength. I think he has answered those. Takes the check down to Swift, who gets swung out of bounds by Alante Taylor. The, the one thing that people wondered about him was his accuracy and consistency throwing deep passes and the deep ball. And that's something he's really worked hard on over the last couple years. Well, for the season entering tonight, he was 76% completion percentage, and he's 14 out of 18 tonight. For 167 and a touchdown. He's thrown seven touchdown passes this year without an interception. And he's only been sacked one time. And, and some of that's the offensive line, and a lot of it is him. And it's one time all year. Tied with Air Force and Duke for the fewest sacks allowed in the country. Wide open over the middle. Cager, nobody in orange in the picture. And finally, it's Theo Jackson who appears to make the tackle at the eight. Well, this is obviously a bust in coverage because Gager is right in the middle and there's nobody there. They don't use a timeout here. They still have two. From to the end zone. Touchdown, George Pickens. And when you have this guy at quarterback, even with limited time left, you attack because you know he's going to do the right thing. Beautiful combination route on the bottom of the, of the formation. Well read by Jake Fromm for the touchdown. And the touchdown for the true freshman Pickens. Georgia, their second. This will be a 30 second timeout. I think they're using it because I think Kirby Smart might want to go for two here, Todd. I don't know why else you'd do this. Yeah. Take the field goal kicker, the PAT kicker, flank and ship off the field. Well, you're right. When you have a guy like Jake Fromm and you've got some timeouts, you let him do his thing. Here's the busted coverage by Tennessee. Nobody in the middle of the formation. An easy find for Jake Fromm. And then on the touchdown, watch the inside receiver hold this guy the corner, and Pickens goes to the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Corner comes up one step. That's all Jake Fromm needed to see, and Pickens with the easy touchdown. I would say this. Todd, one of the negatives of the first half for Tennessee. There's been several times where it looked like they were confused on defense, what the call was, where to line up, and there have been several times where they've left people yeah. uncovered. Yeah, that time uh, too easy for a guy as good as Jake Fromm. He just sees everything. You know, you, he doesn't well, they are miss going much. to go for two. Fromm and the offense back on the field. They'll try to make it a 14 point game with nine seconds to go in the half. They will get the ball to start the third quarter, so they want more momentum to take into the locker room with them. From in trouble, the ball deflected and it falls incomplete. Daryl Taylor had the pressure and got a piece of the ball. I think that's the first time you've called Daryl Taylor's name. Last year he had three sacks of Jake Fromm in this ball game. He's had kind of a quiet start to the 2019 season. Looked like a busted play. I mean, play fake to nobody. And you're right. When we spoke with Jeremy Pruitt yesterday, he said not only was the quarterback play disappointing, but they've expected more from Taylor. He had eight sacks last year, more than any other returning yeah. player in the SEC this year. Bothered by a stress fracture. Yeah. But they're practice, still expecting so. more. Jeremy Pruitt that he knew what he was getting into when he came to Tennessee he said hey 15 years ago I was a high school football coach they give me a chance to be the coach of Tennessee even if I was the 10th choice right. he said with a laugh I'm going to take it it's been a rough ride so far but he has an excellent staff especially from a recruiting standpoint guys with proven track records to recruit that's what it's going to take get this program back to where Vol Nation wants it to be. 
After the fair catch, we remind you that you can tune in Tuesday at 7 on ESPN for college football 150, the American game. The episode's all about recruiting, right on cue, which has been one of the most critical and controversial aspects of college football all the way back to the earliest days. And on Thursday, CFB 150, the greatest walk ons. Panel discusses and debates the greatest walk on stories of all time. That's Thursday at 7 on ESPN. Maurer launching one deep. Intended for Callaway. Have you been catching these college football 150s? Yeah. But boy, they've they're, been terrific. terrific. Really terrific. You know who's outstanding on those? Ivan Mazel. Yeah. Not only one of the great writers in America, but. A real historian and so well spoken. Yeah. I mean, he just explains the history on so many different topics in such an interesting and eloquent way. You know, we've talked, Sean, about these coaches and the familiarity of the coaching staffs. I mean, Jeremy Pruitt and Kirby Smart were together for a long time in Alabama. You know, and, and so many of these coaches on both staffs have ties back to Alabama and Nick Saban and but Pruitt and Kirby Smart were there together for a long time. Final play of the half. And he just threw it up for grabs, ricocheted around, and last touch by Stokes. And we've reached halftime. Georgia leading 26 to 14. And they'll get the second half kickoff after the Mercedes Benz halftime report. Here's Matt Berry. Sean, thank you. Welcome into the Mercedes Benz halftime report. Straight ahead, touchdown Georgia. Mauer given time, throwing deep and has an open receiver. Marquez Callaway all the way, touchdown. After the fake, it's a touchdown. Jawan Jennings from to the end zone, touchdown George Pickens. You're watching college football primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. Very pleasant night here at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. Number three, Georgia, leading Tennessee 26 to 14. It was 14 to 10 in favor of Tennessee with 11 and a half minutes to go in the half, and then 16 straight unanswered points by Georgia. The Bulldog coaches told us during their bye week they really wanted to get more production out of the offense, yeah. and they've done a nice job of doing that. Well, they had 334 yards in the whole game against Notre Dame, 354 yards in the first half tonight. Jake Fromm has been almost perfect, 16 of 20. They've mixed in the run. Very impressed because they've averaged almost nine yards of play. So a uh, very efficient and productive offense for Georgia tonight. Brian Herrian, James Cook back deep for the kickoff from Paxton Brooks, and it'll be a touchback. A moment ago, Holly had a chance to speak with Jeremy Pruitt. Well, Coach Pruitt, seems like you've got a quarterback tonight. What did you think about your young freshman in that first half? Well, he kept his poise. He took what the defense gave him. He spread the ball around, and, and our older guys made some plays for him. You had the lead with just a few minutes left in the half, and they were able to take the lead on two short touchdown drives. What's going on with your defense right now? Well, they're, they're, they're whipping us up front, you know, a lot of yards after contact. We've busted a few things uh, in the secondary as far as underneath throws. We've not got any pass rush. We've got to get some pass rush. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. So here comes Jake Fromm. 16 out of 20, as Todd said. A little RPO action. Yeah. And he threw it to James Cook. That's something that they worked during the bye week, the RPOs. That's almost like triple option play. You fake the run, you've got the quarterback could run, and that little flip out is like the old pitch in the triple option. Just forward instead of backwards. You just can do so much with a quarterback like Jake Fromm. On second and one, the handoff to Swift, and DeAndre got swung down by Daryl Taylor. Well, we talked about Daryl Taylor's a guy that needs to really step up for this defense. This time slips right inside the tackle's block, 
and got a tackle for loss in the backfield and brings up a third down. Now let's see if he can generate some pressure on Jake Fromm on this third down play. Try to get the crowd back into it. This place was electric when Tennessee took the lead. The end of the half was disheartening. It also included a missed field goal by Tennessee, the first miss of the year. And on third and five, whistle stopped the play. And you might notice that this is not the same referee. Ball start. Number 71. Offense. Five penalty. Still third down. We're told that David Smith, who was the referee in the first half, pulled a calf muscle. So that is Kevin Boitman, the center judge, who is now wearing the white hat. Andrew Thomas guilty of the penalty. The unanimous preseason All-American left tackle. Georgia three out of six on third down. Little pressure over the middle. Simmons. Again, terrible tackling by Tennessee, and Simmons got very close to the first down. You, know, you play zone defense on third and ten. You have deep safety so you don't get beat over the top. You want them to throw underneath. So they did what you wanted them to do, but you've got to make the tackle. I mean, you make three guys could have made the tackle short of the first down. And instead, Tyler Simmons is able to get it right to the stick. And right now they're saying fourth and one. And Kirby's going to punt. Yeah, he came up about a half yard short. And if they don't hurry up and get the punt team out there, they're going to get a delay of game penalty as they're not lined up to punt it. And we're down to five. Still Georgia people moving everywhere. They don't snap it. And the play clock is long expired and still no flags or whistles. And finally the back judge throws his flag. Away again. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. I think Kirby thought it was a first down. You know, mm -hmm. I think he thought it was a first down. I don't think he was intending to go for it on fourth and short. I just think he thought it was a conversion. The next thing you knew, the clock was halfway down. I want to bring in Bill Lamagne about the mechanics now with the new referee and the center judge becoming the referee. Right. The center, he moved from center judge. Same type of calls, watching your blocking, watching your quarterback. Tennessee comes after the punt. They blocked one against Chattanooga. Camarda got it off. And Jake's punt is a good one, bouncing inside the 20 yard line. Now, do they have standby officials in an instant like this, or were we going with a man short? No, we, we had an alternate official in the first half, and he was probably the one who was keeping the time when we had the, the clock problems. Now that alternate has come into the game, and he's taken a, a, a position. I think he, he's now as a side judge, possibly. And now the side judge has moved to center judge. And do they train for situations like this? Does the center judge, would he practice being the referee? A lot of center judges across the country were referees in their previous conferences. Uh -huh. So it's a natural switch there. Kevin Boitman does look very comfortable here in the opening minutes of the third quarter as the referee. Mauer's pass is too high. Does everybody want to be the white hat? Is that something that most no, officials aspire to? But uh, it was a lot of officials do want to aspire to the referee. But it's not a job cut out for everybody. My question is, do you have your stripes in your bag? I mean, what if they need you? Can you <laughs> still run up and down down there? If I could use one of those uh, two wheelers, uh, I, I could do it. But otherwise, no. We're told David Smith, the original referee, is uh, still here and helping along the sideline. Jawan Jennings stacked up immediately. Eric Stokes. It was a question mark about whether he's going to play. He left after one series in the Notre Dame game, but uh, he not only has played, but he's been a factor to yeah. that. Well, he read that so quickly. Wanye Morris was out there to block somebody, but Stokes, he had beat him so quick that Morris didn't even know where the guy went. Tough situation right now for Brian Maurer, who's missed his last six passes going back to the end of the first half. He had it rolling for a while. It just feels like a little bit of the air has come out of it for him in this offense, and he goes down. 
tracked down by Trayvon Walker. And help from Aziz Ojolari as well. Trayvon Walker, a true freshman. He's going to come around the outside here and get pressure. A little stunt comes from the middle all the way to the outside. And Morris, the left tackle, got confused. You know, that wasn't a blitz. It was just a four-man rush. But the five up front got confused, and therefore the sack. Dominic Blaylock back for the punt from Joe Doyle. And one shank in the first half when he was just trying to pin them in there. That has hurt his average. This isn't very good either. Low and short. And Blaylock. The flag down that stood up at the 41 yard line 36 yard punt and an eight yard return. But let's sort out the flag. During the return holding number 14 on the return team 10 yard penalty from the spot of the fall first down time up. With 1037 to go in the third quarter in Georgia up 26 to 14. What a matchup next Saturday night at 8 Eastern time on ESPN. Two undefeated teams Florida and LSU getting great quarterback play Joe Burrow if you had the vote today Todd might be the highest the trophy. Unbelievable. He's been unreal. And Kyle Trask. <laughs> very few starts in his life yeah. high school or college has stepped in for Felipe Franks and all he's done is continue the winning for the Florida Gators who had a big victory today over Auburn. Meanwhile LSU at 601 yards of offense as they beat Utah yeah. State. Now, Trask I was watching that game he had a leg injury it looked, it looked bad he mm. came out for a couple possessions and came back and finished the game. Showed some toughness obviously. Florida was an underdog at home against Auburn today and beat them. George Pickens the catch from right on target as usual. That's good for an eight yard gain, but there is a flag down. And Kevin Boitman's crew known for throwing a lot of flags. It's a joke that Mr. Bologna did not seem to appreciate. Personal foul, chop block, number 54 and 55, offense. I think yard penalty. Replay first down. I think it was Henry Toho Toho that was that was blitzing that got caught in the uh, in the chop block. Watch right in the middle here, 54 and 55. Let's see if it was an 11 coming in there on the on the pressure. Yep, there it is. There was... discussion, there is no foul for a chop block. The low player was already <laughs> in the ground Jeez. and did not make a forcible engagement. Was second gonna, down. I was going to say it kind of didn't look like a, an intentional chop block, but. Be good to let that one go. I know Jeremy wants it, but I don't think it was. And Bill is nodding in agreement with you. Yeah. So they bring the ball back to the 44 yard line of Tennessee. Georgia leading by 12. That's the score was at halftime 26 14. We played four and a half minutes here in the third quarter. Series dates back to 1899 and it's dead even all time. Each team has won 23 with two ties. But Georgia's dominated the last two years, winning by a combined score of 79 to 12. Brian Harrion, first down. He got ripped around by the face mask, and here comes the flag. Daniel Batuli is going to be penalized for Tennessee. Well, you know, it, it just kind of feels, Sean, like this game could get away from Tennessee in a big way here in the in the second half. He's saying the two is that he grabbed him by the shirt collar. Personal foul, face mask, number 35, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. I'm not sure he had to hold the face mask. The way he twisted, it looked like you would think that. It looked like he had a hold of the, the jersey right around the neck area. Right. 
Well, we could have had our second consecutive pickup of the flag. Tooley upset, understandably so. He's been their leading tackler each of the last two years, and the only player to lead Tennessee in tackles three straight seasons was A.J. Johnson, who did it 2012 through 14. Short set by Fromm on target. Matt Landers stacked up after he picked up the first down. And George on the move again. First and 10 there at the Tennessee 14. Landers, another one of those tall, angular type receivers, 6'5, 200 pounds out of St. Petersburg, Florida. DeAndre Swift up the middle. And Bryce Thompson just. Shoves down Landers at the end of the play. They line up quickly, and it's DeAndre Swift going nowhere. And now there's some pushing and shoving. Thompson's helmet has come off again. Well, he and Landers, that might have been carryover from the previous yeah. play, and flags thrown. So you want to be the referee Kevin Boydman he's had a lot to deal with <laughs> yes, here in the he first six minutes of the third quarter. You're starting to see a little frustration I think out of Tennessee. I think Kevin Boydman might be saying any of you other guys want to wear this hat personal foul hands to the face number five offense. 15 yard penalty replay second down number 20 for Tennessee they stay in the game because the foul caused the helmet to come off. Well, there's the previous play. Where Thompson shoved him down. That was very close to. Oh my goodness! Well, they missed Thompson throwing a punch in his head there. Well, Bill, that looked like he swung. Thompson swung at Landers to me. The retaliation that he had could have easily been a flag and would have been easily supported. You hit it on the head. It's it, we're seeing a frustration point. Yeah. And the officials have to be on top of it for game control. Uh, Thompson's very fortunate there. Pressure brought by Tennessee one of the few times tonight. And a false start is going to be the call against Georgia. False start. Number one. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. George Pickens, the wide receiver. This was back to the uh, previous player with Landers and Thompson. And Thompson just smacks him in the side of the head. I mean, to me, and, and you never see both, it seems like, but to me, that just should have been something on both of them, offsetting penalties, tell them both to calm down and, uh, and move on. I, I don't know how you pick one of those guys to call the penalty. I'd even take and say if it was into the dead ball period, that type of a slap should be an unsportsmanlike conduct. Mm -hmm. That's not a football act. There's Tyler Simmons run after the catch. And he's out of bounds well short of the first down. Jeremy Pruitt said it to Holly at the half, Todd. They're not getting any pass rush. No. They're not getting anywhere near from. And do you dial up more pressure if you're that? Or just sit back there and let them pick you apart? I think you have to. I think at this point you have to try to bring more people, play some press coverage, take your chances because Jake Fromm's just too good. He's 21 and 25. The only pressure they got was on the failed two point conversion play. Third down and seven. Harrion shifts back to the right hip and takes it on an inside handoff. He comes up well short of the first down. Nigel Warrior and Theo Jackson there and Kirby Smart sends on Rodrigo Blankenship. Well, you know, we talked about this a little bit at the beginning of the show. Is Georgia, is this the year they can kind of take that next step, potentially go all the way? I think that I think they've got a good shot. I mean, then this guy's a big part of it. This guy's like automatic. And so you got automatic points when you get down into a certain part of the field. You got a quarterback that is a great leader and your defense the best that you've had. 27 yard field goal try. 
And he still hasn't missed a kick all year. Field goals or extra points. But it's still a two score game here in Knoxville, middle of the third. ESPN College Football, brought to you by General Mills. Bring more to your game day with General Mills tailgate recipes. See what you can create at wearetailgatenation.com. On the SEC, four dog mascots, including Ugga, Georgia, dating back to the mid-1950s, and Smokey back to 1953. Here's a tale of the tape. And a lot of similarities. Ugga, by the way, voted by Sports Illustrated over the summer as the top mascot in all of college football. They are also celebrating the 150th anniversary of college football. Wow. So they listed the top 10 mascots in their opinion, and uh, Ugga was number one, and Smokey was number 10. Okay. There we go. Blankenship's kickoff. Their catch made by Ty Chandler. And here's Matt Barry back in the studio. John, thank you. Time for the AT&T best performance. A little bit of separation right now between the Buckeyes and Michigan State. J.K. Dobbins off the right side. Takes it 67 yards for the touchdown. That just before the half right now. Buckeyes up 27-10 at the half. Well, they just continue to dominate every opponent. First and 10 Tennessee Eric Gray the freshman out of Memphis the ball carry. How do you feel about this list. Aga number one. Okay. Followed by Oregon's the duck. LSU's Mike the Tiger and Bebo from Texas which got in a memorable yeah. little. Scuff, dust stumble up with uh, dust up with Aga yeah. right before the Sugar Bowl that we did. Then the Stanford tree, which I know you love. Come on. Who, who <laughs> voted on this? This is Sports Illustrated. No. Ralphie well, the Buffalo just, from Colorado. Out, right? huh? uh, Cocky the Gamecock from South Carolina. Western Kentucky's Big Red. Otto the Orange from Syracuse. Now I think they finally hit it right on the head. And then Smokey here from Tennessee, number 10. You seem to have a, a big problem with that list as Eric Gray gets dumped again. Right what do you have against the tree? You have an issue with the tree. I could tell that we're at Stanford a, a couple not weeks a ago. It's a mascot. It is. It's a tree. In a mascot costume. No. Might not be a, a great mascot in your opinion, but it is their it is their mascot. If you were a tree, what kind of a tree would you be? Uh, Smokey, the actual dog Smokey, not this guy in the outfit. Uh, they have a fraternity here who kind of looks out for Smokey. Yeah. I like smoking. You like smoking. Third down and two. And he tosses it to Chandler, and he puts his head down and gets the first down. J.R. Reed up from his safety spot trying to make the play. And uh, here's Holly Rowe. President, keeping a close eye on this Tennessee sideline as the game starts to get away from them on how they're behaving, how they're into it. They are still really engaged right here. Maurer, before they took the field for this series, is encouraging his guy. Lots of energy. They're putting their arms up to the crowd. They need encouragement. I don't see them throwing in the towel right now despite the score. There's still good energy on this Tennessee sideline. Well, there's only, uh, there are only two scores down yep. and five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. So plenty of time if they can refine their rhythm on offense that they have for some of the first half. Maurer running for his life now. And takes cover on the sideline in the arms of Mark Webb. There is a flag down back behind the line of scrimmage. I think they're going to call a blindside block penalty on one of the offensive linemen for Tennessee. Trying to protect his quarterback on the scramble. And he kind of peeled back and got a nice block. This is a new rule this year and a new point of emphasis. Personal foul. Targeting number 64 offense. 15 yard penalty. Replay first down. The play is under further review. That's Wanye Morris, the highly recruited freshman left tackle out of Savannah, Georgia. I saw him peel back, and I thought that's what the penalty did. He lead with the crown of his helmet. I mean, that's.
Well, after a couple of looks at it, what do you think, Bill? He does get the crown of the helmet in, and it does jar his head back. The thing I'd like to see on this call is, is to make it a blindside block, like you said, Todd, because he does come in. It's open field. Get the blindside block with targeting so you minimally have the blindside block call. Yeah. But I, I believe that we'll get a targeting call on this one. And that will be a huge loss yeah. for Tennessee if replay confirms it. It'll bring Marcus Tatum into the ball game, who's played quite a bit this year, but Wanye Morris is one of their best. Five star recruit. Now, Grayson High School, he got here in January, so got to take part in spring practice, and he's been very solid as a true freshman starter. They started four of their five games this year at left tackle. Meanwhile, Jared Garantano, who was replaced as the starting quarterback after 18 consecutive starts under center, has been throwing on the sideline, as you see, as his helmet on, right by Chris Wanky, the quarterback coach. Well, you wonder if Mowry got knocked around after on that scramble. Review. There was no foul for targeting. Well, that's one of the points of emphasis, if you will, Bill, this year. If in doubt, uh, wave off the targeting, right? If Isn't they, that what they told they the they replay people to do? Right. If they can't do a confirm on it, then the targeting penalty is no. going away. I still believe we have a blindside block there, but because he didn't put that into his announcement, they can't create it after the fact. Yeah. So here's Jared Garantano returning. Perhaps Maurer got shaken up on that play. He had started 18 consecutive games prior to tonight when Maurer, the freshman, replaced him. He's on target. A big hit. But what a catch by Dominic Wood Anderson. The hang on at the 50 yard line. And there is a flag down on the end of that play. I think that was Richard LeCount that put the hit on Wood Anderson. Good timing, good throw that time by Garantano. And excellent concentration by Wood Anderson to hang on to the football. You think David Smith, the original referee, is kind of glad he <laughs> ducked out of this at halftime because there has been something on every play, it seems, here in the third quarter. This is a different situation. Receiver is defenseless. Bill, talk us through this right here. All right, he does launch. That's an indicator. Right. However, the shoulder and his head are totally, the shoulder hits in the chest. The head is to the side. Replay can't yeah. go with a targeting right. call on this one. Was not forcible to the head or neck area, right? Correct. There was no contact to the head neck area. But to follow up on what we were just talking about, the replay people now instructed, if in doubt, take the targeting away. The officials on the field are instructed to throw it if they have any question, right? That's correct. They're told to throw the flag if they suspect it's targeting and let the replay take it off. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which is what happened there. Uh, that's good. Good job by the replay booth. Good play by LeCount. Better play by Dominic Wood Anderson hanging on to the football. One of the other things that's that says it's not targeting the play is a completed catch first down is the fact that when he was hit you saw his head go forward oh. if he'd have been hit in the head neck area it would have snapped back or snapped to the side so that shows you he was hit in the chest that's just the dynamics on it. Well, Garantano is in for one play makes a nice throw and Brian Maurer back in the football game. One for one for 14 yards for the junior out of Lodi, New Jersey. Sleeve on the left arm now of Maurer. He's 11 for 23. He lofts one and it's intercepted. Tried to float it in to Josh Palmer and Richard LeCount picked it off. He's off the play. It's an interception by the defense. First down, Georgia. 
So he had an opening on this throw because the corner actually stumbled to fall down. But this ball has to be thrown on the line. It can't be thrown with a loft. There's a hole right here. You got to zip it in there in between the corner and the safety. When he lofted it in the air, LeCount made the play. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. And what a start to the season it's been for the SEC. Top teams all continuing to win. Alabama had today off. The Florida big win. Of course, Auburn went down to defeat in that one. LSU won again today. But they're going to start playing each other. Fromm swings it out wide. James Cook to the 25 yard line tackled by Nigel Warrior. So here's a look at this week's rankings brought to you by Goodyear. Not only was Alabama the new number one idol, but so was Clemson, the former number one. Alabama leapt over them. But Ohio State leading. LSU a win. Oklahoma, another big day for Jalen Hurts. Wisconsin, that's their third shutout yeah. of the season. They haven't done Incredible that since defense. 1937. I'll tell you who might slip in that top 10 and replace Auburn after today would be Penn State. I think that is a team that is starting to surge. The big game at Iowa next weekend. Iowa lost at Michigan today. Really sloppy performance by them. Zamir White, the ball carrier, and he has a first down. That'll be a big game in Iowa City next Saturday, Penn State and Iowa. This is where I think you're going to see this Georgia offensive line just really begin to impose their will. We've already talked to you about Aubrey Solomon, one of their best defensive linemen for Tennessee, out of the game, has not returned. And, uh, and Georgia's running in three backs right now, four actually. James Cook also involved four guys sharing the load here, running behind this big physical offensive line. And George is slowing down its tempo on offense now with a 15 point lead late in the third quarter. Zamir White. Another first down. And let's send you back to the studio. Here's Matt Berry. All right, guys, an update now on Ole Miss taking on Vanderbilt. Snoop Connor. 84 yards for the touchdown. Big play for Snoop and Ole Miss. Having their way with Vanderbilt, 24-6. Snoop. <laughs> so uh, at least it's been a good weekend for one Snoop. Here's Zamir White, the ball carrier. Apparently uh, the most famous Snoop. Snoop Dogg got in a little you know, trouble at uh, Midnight Madness or whatever they call it in Kansas. Yeah, I a heard too, a little bit about that. Performance was a little too adult apparently for the family audience. Jayhawks apologize. Second and two. James Coley told us we need to get Zamir White more touches. They have tonight. Redshirt freshman who rushed for more than 7,100 yards in high school in North Carolina. Again, no pressure from Tennessee. Dominic Blaylock, the intended receiver, he got clubbed by Nigel Warrior, and it's an incomplete pass. Georgia wanted pass interference. I think the fact that Warrior was, he did make contact, but on his way to the football, going to make a play on the football. Again, you just see the field generalship of Jake Fromm. Organizing, changing protections, working at the line of scrimmage. Third and two. And we'll see if this is four Close. down territory because it didn't look like DeAndre Swift got it. That belted it back by Henry Toho Toho and Matthew Butler. Now Butler's the guy in there for Aubrey Solomon. He's made a few plays tonight. The balls again need to hurry up and line up. And DeAndre Swift is driven back. Toho Toho leading the charge. And the balls think they've stopped them and based on where those officials are marking the ball right on that line of scrimmage he's about a half yard shy and Tennessee's going to take over on downs 
at the 39-yard line. Well, watch right here. Right in the middle, they're going to just take the guard, Justin Schaefer, number 54, and push him right back into the ball carrier, Swift. And because Swift got stood straight up by his own man, Toho Toho was able to wrap him up and pull him back. But penetration right over the left guard is what stopped that play. And what a stand by the Tennessee Volunteers. And again, still very much in this ball game if they can put something together here offensively. Henry Toho Toho. The ruling in the field is that the runner was short of the line to gain. The play is under further review. With 127 to go in the third quarter and Georgia leading by 15. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe back in Knoxville, Tennessee. During the commercial break, the new referee, Kevin Boitman, announced that after the replay review, the call on the field stands. So Toe Toe's tackle gives the ball back to the balls on downs. They did not change the spot of the ball, and Tennessee takes over. Still within two scores. With 1.27 to go in the third quarter. They haven't scored since the first three seconds of the second quarter. Maurer has not had a yard of passing here in the third quarter. And he still has it as he tries to get it to Josh Palmer with DJ Daniel on him. But he's thrown for 205, and now here comes a late flag. He's thrown for 205, and that's already far more than Peyton Manning threw for in his first start against Washington State Passing back in 94. Number 14, defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the fall. Automatic first down. Now that flag was a while in coming. Yeah. Yep. DJ Daniel. Saw Peyton on the field before the game. Yeah, he's here. Good. Yeah. Of course, if he uh, was on the field, he had to have been here. So what I just said is kind of staying the obvious. I'm still just kind of despondent about the whole thing went with Snoop Dogg last night. Because you're a big fan. I'm, well, I'm a fan, and you know you like the Jayhawks to have a nice night and just go well for everybody. And it's too bad that it didn't. Here's Ty Chandler. Put his head down, tried to run over Eric Stokes and couldn't do it. And Stokes had some help, and the chippiness continues here. Well, this is where Tennessee and offensive coordinator Jim Chaney needs his playmaker guys to kind of step up and make some plays here. That's Juwan Jennings. That's Marquez Callaway. That's Dominic Wood Anderson. Those guys have to step up and make some plays here at this point in the game nearing the end of the third quarter. They had a lot of life and energy and that's one of the things coach Cheney said he thought that Maurer would bring. He has some juice but. I haven't seen much of that emotion of course when half your offensive line moves before the snap that'll take some of the juice out of the operation. False start. Number 73 offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Yeah, well, the penalty is called on Trey Smith. And really, the penalty was on the center because Brandon Kennedy did not snap the football. And that's, there were more people than just Trey Smith that started early. And again, th those are the kind of penalties that if you're the underdog and you know, you're trying to knock off a team like Georgia, an elite team, you just can't have these kind of penalties. You, you can't put yourself in second and 12 situation. You got good field position, you got to take advantage of it. Senator Kennedy, a transfer from Alabama. Maurer in trouble, and he's taken down by Aziz Ojolari. Yeah, Ojolari just whipped the left tackle. Wanye Morris. Watch him right here. He's just going to go just beat the left tackle with speed. Gets around him to the edge. Maurer, no chance running away from him because Ojolari had a full head of steam on his way to the quarterback. And Jalari's brother BJ, highly touted defensive end in high school, and he is coming to Tennessee to play college football. You're watching college football prime time presented by Hampton by Hilton. Would you rescue me when I'm by myself? But I need your love, I need your help. Would you rescue me? Would you rescue me? We hand it off to Herschel. There's a hole. Five. 
10, 12, he's running over people. Driving and running with those big fives. My God, a freshman. <laughs> One of the great calls of all time by one of the great voices of college football, the longtime voice of Georgia football, the late Larry Munson. Well, here's Jared Garantano back in. Came in for one play, completed a 14 yard pass. He escapes the rush and goes down at the 44 yard line good tackle by Mark Webb on the far sideline and we talked about this Georgia defense being the most talented that Kirby Smart has had now, Tennessee made some plays in the first half Brian Maurer hit a couple big throws but that third quarter they ran 11 plays for a total of 15 yards and they have speed they have depth no big stars but they are a well schooled unit that uh, tough to run on in particular Joe Doyle to punt for the fifth time Dominic Blaylock back for it a short punt a fair catch made on the run by Blaylock just 31 yards on the boat here's Holly well, talking with Jake from this week the quarterback for Georgia he said that they played well enough to win against Notre Dame but they didn't play well enough they really wanted to dig in on their bye week and improve in a couple of areas and we've seen some improvement in those areas tonight be better on their RPO game the run pass option threaten downfield better with their receiving core and make better connections downfield and threaten that defense and also be more creative in the run game it seems like they've ticked three of those boxes tonight he said, we know we have something special ahead of us. We've just got to get better, not play just well enough to win. Well, they've got they've got big aspirations, big goals and big games coming up on their schedule. So that's why they have to to have that that attitude. Well, the coaches echoed that Brian Harry and the ball carrier James Coley and Kirby smart telling us they wanted to get more on the perimeter of their offense yeah. so a lot of the success they had in the first four games is kind of up the middle with the running game they wanted to spread the ball the width of the field in addition to being effective in the middle. And again with the 15 point lead. The pace has slowed significantly, which yeah. is wise. Well, and, and George is going to a heavy package now with an extra offensive lineman. Cade Mays lined up as a tight end on the left. Cade Mays, one of the interesting stories in this game. Of course, his dad was uh, Kevin, was an all SEC offensive lineman at Tennessee. He's a Knoxville kid, was longtime committed to Tennessee until the whole Butch Jones thing kind of unraveled. And in a late decision, made a decision to come to Georgia. Not a Knoxville Catholic, two times Mr. Football in Tennessee. You said his dad, uh, all SEC offensive lineman, a team captain at Tennessee, but he elected to change course and go to Georgia. Third down and five. Tennessee. Can they get near from? No. Receiver open. Demetrius Robertson with a big gainer. First down, Georgia at the Tennessee 37 yard line. What a beautiful throw by Jake Fromm. Great protection. Tennessee tried to bring pressure. They tried to put some heat on Jake Fromm. It was picked up. And that left single coverage. And a beautiful throw to Robertson on the flag route there. Just outstanding. Communication by quarterback and receiver and a beautiful throw. In Tennessee and Jeremy Pruitt told Holly this at halftime. They have just not been able to generate any pressure on Jake Fromm and that gets frustrating for a defense. Back to the ground Brian Harrion. Harder in seven yards. Here's Matt Barry. Guys, you have an All-State mayhem moment. SMU hasn't been ranked since 1986. Tulsa hasn't beaten a ranked opponent in 16 consecutive tries. Something's got to give Zach Smith to Keenan Johnson. And right now, all Tulsa, 30 to nine. Wow, wow, wow. Don't sleep on the Golden Hurricane. No. 
Brian Herrian, you know, this is what you talked about earlier, Todd, when James Cole, the offensive coordinator for Georgia, told us this is the time of the game. Yeah. And you've worn down the defense, you lean on that huge offensive line, just play power football and put the game away. Yep, you, you play the clock and you play to your strength, which is this offensive line. Averaging 6.6 .6 per rush tonight. And then your quarterback is 23 of 28 for 276. No sacks, no turnovers. At 505 yards of total offense, they came in averaging 509. There's still 10.45 to go. From over the middle. Lawrence Cager, first down, 12 yard line. And he's not getting up. Nigel Warrior made the tackle for Tennessee. You know, we, we talk about this offensive line as they attend to Cager. Not just run blocking, but pass blocking as well tonight. Georgia fans, Lawrence Cager, who was slow to get up after that last play, he has been seen to by athletic trainer Ron Corson on the sideline here. He's got a heavy brace underneath his jersey that extends out onto his left shoulder. They were examining that area. Seems like he's got a previous issue that was bothering him there, but he's moving his arm around. Seems like he will be able to return to this game imminently. His catch, the fifth of the night for the transfer from Miami that leads Georgia in receptions tonight. Seventh play of their drive upcoming. I think one more score would probably put this away. They'd be up by three scores against the Tennessee offense that has really struggled since the opening moments of the second quarter when they actually led this football game. Zamir White straight ahead. The attendance here tonight 92,709. That's about 10,000 below capacity here at Neyland Stadium. Most of the folks are still here. And a lot of folks who cheer for the Bulldogs are here tonight as well. There's a lot of red and black as we look around. That was quite a scene two weeks ago, wasn't oh it? Boy. In Athens when Notre yeah. Dame was there, the largest crowd ever. Sanford Stadium, 93,246. They added 500 additional seats underneath the scoreboard. Uh, we talked to Claude Felton, longtime SID. He said he's never seen it like that. Harry and down just short of the first down, under nine and a half minutes to go now. Georgia trying to make it 15 straight wins against teams from the SEC East. They haven't lost to an Eastern Division team in the Southeastern Conference since October 29th of 2016. That was Kirby Smart's first season as head coach when they lost to Florida in Jacksonville. Here's that heavy lineup again with the extra offensive lineman overloaded to the left side of the formation here. Marion remains the running back. We noted earlier he's typically in there in goal line situations. Play clock down to zero. Apparently they just did get it off. Harrion bounced around, fighting for the goal line, and they're going to mark him just short. But it is a first down for Georgia. Harrion kind of runs angrily, you know. I mean, he he's a good short yardage back. And again, I just I just think it's so cool for him, who is a guy who has waited. He's been patient. He lived through the time of. Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle and then DeAndre Swift was the third guy and he was kind of always the next guy and, and now he's the number two guy and he's getting a lot of carries this year. That's Elijah Holyfield also a right. thousand yard rusher last year. He left with a year to go of eligibility and did not get drafted. Harry and ducks his head under and it's a touchdown for the Bulldogs. Again, this is this is offensive line kind of imposing their will here down the stretch, running off to that overloaded left side, and Harrion does a good job of getting low, getting that ball across the plane. 
His fourth touchdown of the season and a career high 88 yards rushing for the senior from Douglasville, Georgia. Rodrigo Blankenship drives through the extra point. And with 8.02 to go, it's 36 14 in favor of the number three team in the country. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. ESPN College Football is presented by Hampton by Hilton. College football stays here. Book now at Hampton.com and in part by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Coming right at the progressive pylon camera, DeAndre Swift. Great look at the catch by Cager for a Georgia touchdown. Georgia leading now with 8.02 to go. 36 to 14. Ty Chandler deepest for the kickoff from Blankenship, who just continues to bomb them. It's almost like a couple times he's intentionally tried to encourage Tennessee yeah. to try to return them, and they've just gone for the fair catch. Said in the Georgia notes that a couple of times this year when he did not have touchbacks, that was on purpose to give their coverage team practice <laughs> covering kickoffs. What a weapon he is, Rodrigo Blankenship. On his way to an NFL future for sure. Brian Maurer back in there. We've seen Aaron Tando a couple times. He throws a deep ball and it's broken up by Eric Stokes. Beautiful play by Stokes. For a guy who was a question mark coming in, he's seen a lot of action and played very well. Sophomore from Covington, Georgia. And they felt like he had a really good week of practice and he's a scrappy competitive kid so they're pretty comfortable that he was going to be okay tonight. He's played very well. And Maurer has zero yards passing here in the second half. And Georgia has just squeezed the whole Tennessee offense. I mean here in the second half they just have really kind of tightened the screws. Tighten the screws on Tim Jordan after the handoff. So 10 for 17 to start from our one for eight cents. And the one completion here in the second half went for zero yards. First two touchdown passes of his career in the first half when Tennessee took a 14 to 10 lead. 16 unanswered points to end the half for Georgia. They led 26 14 at the break and they've widened it now to 36 14. They bring some pressure after Maurer. Deep ball. And Jennings runs under it. Nice over the shoulder catch as he managed to get away from the coverage of Devon Wilson. Well, he's in the slot. So this time they kind of ran a, a fade from the inside slot. A little bit more room to work with on the sideline. Coverage fell down. It was still a beautiful throw over the outside shoulder. Devon Wilson tripped and fell down and, and a nice play for Tennessee. And a 100 yard receiving night now for Jennings after a 31 yard gain. Maurer fumbled it, juggled it, had to get it back. Jennings now seven catches for 113 and a touchdown. Well, we haven't seen Jordan Davis back in the ballgame since that early injury. But a guy who is in the game tonight for Georgia who has not played much this year, Julian Rochester, number five, is in there now. He was battling some early season injuries. He's a veteran defensive lineman on this Georgia defense. He wasn't even listed on their depth chart no. tonight. And they have. <laughs> As the uh, catch is made by Tim Jordan, he's out of bounds, tackled by Nicobe Dean, a true freshman. They have, at least on our spotting charts, on the uh, front three positions, end tackle and nose, they have 14 players listed yeah. at three positions. And Rochester, not one of them, but good to see him back out there. Under six minutes to go, Maurer has them moving. Another nice throw. Yep. That's Reminiscent of the first half, a strike to Austin Pope. 
Well, I think, you know, the silver lining for Tennessee is I think this kid is somebody they can build around. I mean, I think he can continue to improve at quarterback. You know, he's shown some moxie. He's made some nice throws tonight. He's going to minimize the damage and scramble out of bounds. He put up some ridiculous numbers in high school. Did Brian Maurer mentioned the single season county record Marion County in Florida the more than 3500 yards passing last year in his high school career he threw for 7664 yards 64 touchdowns. It is also the county record Marion County Florida. It's out of Westport High School here's another flag moving along the line and Darnell Wright. Georgia, one of the things they're doing. Number 72, offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. One of the things Georgia's doing this year, more so than last year, a lot more line stunts, a lot more movement. That was a late shift by their whole defensive line, and it kind of spooked Darnell Wright. And he left his stance early. But Kirby Smart wanted he wanted to create more negative plays, as they were terming it havoc type plays. And part of that is is increasing the stunts with their defensive Look line. Out. Maurer got blasted. He never saw the corner blitz coming from Stokes. Tay Crowder picks it up. Crowder, former running back, still has that speed, and he scores. A defensive touchdown for Georgia. Result of the play is a fumble recovered by the defense for a touchdown. Now Maurer took a big-time shot. It was so great to see Garantano yeah, will be replaced out there as one of the first guys to check on him. Because of the short split, it was so easy to disguise that corner blitz by Eric Stokes, and Maurer had no idea it was coming. Clean hit, separates him from the football, and then Tay Crowder able to scoop it up and score. That split, the offensive receiver split, really helped to disguise that blitz. Big night for Stokes and a 60 yard fumble return for a touchdown by Tay Crowder. And Georgia now leads 43 14 with 439 to go here in the fourth quarter. Referee got blasted too. Sports Center from L.A. tonight. After Washington Stan, we're with Linda and Stan. Uh, Kirk Hurt Street's biggest takeaways from the day in college football. Plus Twins, Yankees, and Rays Astros game two breakdowns as well as UFC 243 post fight coverage at Sports Center right after college football on ESPN and the ESPN app. Ryan Maurer out of the medical tent when he came off the field. He went down. Training staff got him back on his feet and brought him into the tent. So it's good to see him looking better than he did just a few minutes ago. Blank and ship with a touchback. Now, it was a clean hit by Eric Stokes, but it was a hard hit. Here's what happened when he came to the sideline, grabbing at his midsection. Again, credit Jared Garantano for being such a great teammate, especially under the circumstances. He went down. On the ground for a moment, they picked him back up and immediately brought him into the medical tent. It's kind of a scary scene for a yeah. couple of seconds. It's also scary for the referee. The new referee was the center judge in the first half, Kevin Boitman, who got run over during that fumble return for a touchdown. There's Tim Jordan, who's Tim actually Jordan. the man who ran over Boitman, and the training staff was out to take a look at the referee. Who actually threw the last Time block for, for the touchdown <laughs> inadvertently? Well, the difference: Maurer had rib pads on, and that guy did not. He took a direct hit as well from Tim well, he Jordan. He stayed in the game. Have you ever done a game where you lost two referees? No. Because David Smith, who was the referee in the first half, apparently pulled a calf muscle. Well, guys, you saw the hit Maurer took. He was in the injury tent being looked at for a while, but he popped out of the tent with no help from anybody, and he told his teammates on the sideline he kind of came out 
Hey, I'm okay. I'm okay. He hasn't come in for this series, obviously, but it looks like he is going to tell everybody he's okay right now. I'm sure they'll evaluate him further after the game. I'm sure he wants to show his toughness to his teammates. He does not want to come out of the game, but at this point, it's probably wise to not put him back in. So here is Jared Garantano. Who had made 22 career starts, including 18 in a row, prior to being replaced tonight by the freshman Mauer. Tim Jordan has the first down. Here's Matt Berry. Guys, coming up after you go final, Pac-12 after dark. Davis Mills gets the start for Stanford, taking on Jacob Eason and Washington. That coming up in about 15 minutes right here on ESPN. Tehran Calbert, offensive lineman, the injured player for Tennessee. 404 to go. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Friends, we remind you, Boomer and TJ are back with NFL primetime every Sunday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, only on ESPN+. Plus. They'll have all the highlights and breakdowns from the day's games, updates after the Sunday and Monday night games. Scott Van Pelt and Joe Tessitore are also part of the fun to get ESPN+. Plus. Download the app or go to ESPNplus.com. We're talking about officials getting hurt. I think TJ got hurt. I think he's got an Achilles injury, and he's got to get a replacement this week with Boomer. I had not heard that. Yeah, I heard that today. There's Eric Gray buried by Julian Rochester. Eric Gray, the running back out of Memphis. Another win for them in recruiting. Highly recruited. First player in Tennessee to be Mr. Football three times. Darnell Wright holding his left wrist at the end of that play. Well, one of the things that Jeremy Pruitt talked to us about this disappointing one and three start. He said we're not at the point in our program where we can afford to have injuries. Yeah, we don't have enough play. depth. Yeah. And we've had too many injuries. Got a vote of confidence this week from the athletic director, the former coach, Philip Fulmer, who also denied some reports that he might be interested in coming back to coach the balls. He says at age 69, he no longer has any interest in coaching. And he believes in Jeremy Pruitt. Nate McBride getting some playing time. And he knocked down Eric Gray as we approach three minutes to go. George on its way to 5 and 0 for the season. And you'll have to think there won't be any changes at the uh, top of the no. rankings that we saw Alabama, Clemson, Georgia you would think would be the top 3. So much better of a bye week for Georgia too coming off that emotional win over Notre Dame. Extra week to prepare to heal some guys up. Last year their bye week was the week after a disappointing loss to LSU down in Baton Rouge. Tim Jordan running left breaks Good tackles run. as a first down and crosses midfield. Hey, you love to see that. I mean, just no quit your team and your players. Tim Jordan, the third guy listed in the running back rotation, running with some aggression there. And it's become a broadcasting cliche, but there are uh, still plenty of people who have an interest in the end of this game. Mamas and daddies, right? Yes, that's right. They're the only ones still here in the stadium. You saw the traffic out on the Neyland Drive on this beautiful East Tennessee night. Jordan running hard. Junior out of Bartow, Florida. Tackled by Channing Tyndall. Sophomore backup linebacker. Well, Kirby Smart talked to us about how many players they play on defense. It was something like 36 players before the Notre Dame game had played at least 25 snaps yeah. on defense. That's in three games. So we have a lot of depth, but good for team morale when everybody knows they're going to get in. Yeah, no doubt. Flag down as Tim Jordan was stopped. Christopher Smith, listed as a third string safety, made the tackle. 
And they play some of their best players on special teams. I mean, they want to be really good in that area as well. Personal foul, face mask, number 22, defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And you pretty much always have fresh players in on defense. Yeah. You don't have anybody who's really piling up an impossible number of snaps. Another look through the progressive pylon camera. I'm not going to lie. We must have been one short on the progressive pylon camera mentions because uh, that was the least compelling shot we've ever seen. Very nicely painted goal line. Here's Garantano to the end zone. Incomplete. Yeah, late flag. I think this was, a, I think this should have been pass interference. It was intended for Ramel Keaton, a true freshman. There was a push in the back before the ball arrived. And I think I think it's the right call. Well, if Kevin Boitman did want to be a referee, uh, after tonight, he's probably very happy to go back Pass to being a center judge. Number one, defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Watch right at the end of this play. Here's the shove in the back. Wasn't a play on the football. That was uh, just a clear push in the back. The back judge could not see it. And my question would be, was it catchable? Bill Lemagne says it might have been uncatchable because of the push, which is plausible. So Tennessee at the five yard line. Garantano to the far sideline again intended for Ramel Keaton. He's out of Marietta, Georgia. That's just one catch and this is true freshman season. 113 to go. The last I saw Tennessee was a 24 and a half point underdog earlier today. Tim Jordan stays in the block. Aaron Tano throws incomplete. Man, I tell you nobody is safe tonight. Referees. <laughs> Sideline people. Photographers. Tyreek Stevenson had the coverage on Isaiah Montgomery. Tano from a football family. His dad was an outstanding wide receiver at Rutgers back in the uh, early 90s. James in the Rutgers Hall of Fame with 158 catches. Jarrett throws. Nate McBride is there to break it up. Well, they had first and goal on the five. Now this is perhaps their last chance. As you said, Todd, the coaches. Very complimentary of Garantano. They say he's a great kid. He works right. hard. They had high hopes for him coming into this season. Just for some reason, he was not able to take what he did on the practice field to the game field. He, even in the spring and summer, during the week of practice, he was good. But on Saturdays, he he just didn't seem to be able to pull the trigger the way he did in practice, and uh, they weren't getting the execution from that position. Georgia. Their first of the half. Georgia wants to keep them out of the end seconds. zone here with 102 to go. And the coaches were saying for Tennessee that they are hoping Garantano, when he gets back in there, you know, this might just yeah. be learned from being on the sides and then get back out there and get back to where he used to be. Here's tonight's PlayStation player impact ranking. DeAndre Swift has a rating of 93. That is third best among FBS running backs and their offensive line 95, fourth best. We had Oklahoma, Wisconsin, and Louisiana from the Sun Belt Conference. I think the thing that makes DeAndre Swift so good is he's he's just the combination. He, he's got speed. He can run by you and make the deep run. He can make you miss. He's got power, and he's excellent out of the backfield catching the football. I have not seen Louisiana play. They're pretty good. They're better than this Georgia offensive line. <laughs> yeah. That's just a little give bit them hard the Sun Belt trophy right now. <laughs> 
And here's a Todd McShay's opinion about the running backs. Of course, this is with an eye toward the next draft. I tell you what, there are a lot of good running backs. If Jonathan Taylor's fifth, another 100 yard game today, that's 27 and 32 career games for the Badgers. Some people are hanging on this play. It's a blitz, and the pass is incomplete. Lewis Seen, true freshman out of Cedar Hill, Texas, came on the blitz, and Georgia holds. They had first and goal at the five, and Tennessee could not score. Well, Garantano saw an open receiver. He wanted to get it to Andrew Craig, number 86, is going to break open right here. The problem is he just didn't have enough time to get rid of the football because of the blitz. Lewis Sign was there with the pressure and Garantano not able to get the ball out quick enough. Lewis seen with the, the pressure, another one of these promising young high level recruits out of Cedar Hill, Texas. So the Georgia defense still has not allowed a rushing touchdown this season. Both scores by Tennessee tonight were through the air. Stetson Bennett has come in. Come in and run the victory play, Stetson. Yeah. Well, he's come back to Georgia. He was at Georgia, wanted to play. Yep. So he went to junior college last year in Mississippi and now has come back. And uh, looks like they'll have to snap it one more time. It's a good football team. You know, we've seen some good ones. It's the best one we've seen in person, mm -hmm. I think. You know, you, we've seen Clemson in person. We've you seen think Clemson, better than we've Clemson. seen Oklahoma, we've seen, yeah, I think right now they are. Yeah. They're we've playing not better. seen Alabama or Ohio State in person. Right. So Kirby Smart. And the Bulldogs have 15 straight wins now against teams from the SEC East. Here's Holly. Well, Jake, you told me that your team was really dialed in during the bye week and all the things you wanted to accomplish, it seems like you did today. How do you assess how your team came out tonight? Yeah, um, I, I think of the guys, after two weeks of preparation, uh, we came out, we did some really good things. Uh, we had some good explosive plays on offense. Uh, we came out, uh, and, and they were physical with us. They came out, they played really well. Uh, they had two weeks to work on a plan as well. So uh, I think for uh, the level of preparation, I think both teams came in and played really well. After Brian Heron had that tough touchdown down in the end zone, the offensive lineman came off, and I heard Isaiah Wilson say, man, I love you guys. What feels yeah. special about this group? You yeah. can feel it. No doubt. This team's special. Uh, we love each other. We're playing for each other. You know, we're not playing for the number on the back. We're playing uh, for the team on the front. And uh, guys are really buying into it. Uh, I love it. It's a great feel right now. And uh, let's go in next week and get better. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Holly. Fromm threw for 288 on 24 out of 29 and two touchdowns without an interception. He still hasn't thrown a pick this year. Georgia scored the last 33 points of the game. Final score 43 to 14. Let's send you now to Palo Alto, Washington, and Stanford. Here's Jason Benetti.